Good morning and welcome to WDWNT Live. Of course, we're here every day until the Disney parks around the world reopen, at least some of them. Because we're ending on May 29th, which is quickly approaching. Disney Springs will be open and Shanghai will be open. There'll be things to do some places. Anyway, uh, this morning, uh, joining me of Tyler and Spencer. Good morning. Good morning. Spencer's angry about something. I don't know why. Spencer's ready no, for a tired. Tokyo <laughs> Park to not be one or two and to scream at me. That's what Spencer's ready for. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So we're here this morning, and uh, this is something I've been wanting to do for a while. There's going to be a, a corresponding article on the website eventually also, but um, we were looking to fill some content here on WWNT Live, and I thought it would be fun to do this first for um, our more dedicated fans, which are definitely those of you who watch the shows. And so uh, we're going to sort of a litmus test for this ranking. Uh, we're going to find out what, uh, what my thoughts are, how I would rank the 12 Disney parks around the world. That's what we're doing here this morning. Some reminders before we get started. If you'd like to support what we're doing, number one, uh, there's the Super Chat down in the lower right-hand corner there on YouTube. You could donate that way. You could open up a bag of Lay's or whatever Spencer's doing. They're oh. lemon cakes. I'm having my dinner. <laughs> yeah. We pay very well here, so much so that you can have lemon cakes for dinner. Uh... <laughs> They're if you'd like yen, to buy Spencer so yeah. some lemon cakes, there's the Super Chat down in the lower right hand corner. For just $2 a day, Spencer can eat lemon cake. <laughs> Cue the Sarah McLaughlin music. Uh, <laughs> of course, the other when way to buy somebody Spencer... somebody paid me. The other, way, the other way to buy Spencer's lemon cakes is to become a member of the WIGS program, the WDWNT Inner Globe Society. Um, this, uh, you can join at patreon.com slash WDWNT starting at just $2 a month. You get post shows for, uh, WDW News Tonight and Park Center. You get, uh, full res PDF scans of, uh, vintage Disney Parks paper paraphernalia. Um, starting next month, there are more exclusive shows, watch alongs and things of the like coming each and every week to the WIGS program. Again, you can join just $2 starting, uh, point for our WIGS program, patreon.com slash WDWNT. Also, we could just buy this boy some lemon. They're literally, they're like, they're a hundred yen. They're the cheapest possible it's, lemon cakes I could buy. It's less than a dollar, what? folks. What's the less Canadian? It's 91 cents. Oh, in, in Canadian, Ooh. that's like eight dollars. Yeah. Yeah, there you yeah. go. Yeah, it's like 70 cents but American, a hundred yen uh, in Japanese, and then uh, in Canada, it's eight dollars. <laughs> but they're they're shaped like lemons. It's it's kind of cute. Of course, they're so. shaped like lemons. It's Japan, everything's <laughs> cute and thematic, including the dentist. Go to the Mermaid Dental Clinic. <laughs> oh right. It has an elaborate backstory about Jesus how they caught Christ. a mermaid, and it was displayed at the dentist. Anyway, we'll, we'll continue on. <laughs> okay, so this is as simple as it sounds. We have twelve Disney parks in the world. I'm going to rank them from least. <laughs> least good to most good <laughs> uh, is is the idea. Uh, so we're going to start at number 12. Number 12 should be pretty obvious. It's Walt Disney Studios Paris. There's no argument oh. to this. Oh, no, it can't be Shanghai. I mean, I, I, I was, yeah, I, I can't genuinely thought you were going to say Shanghai. <laughs> no, I can't even do that to Shanghai. No, I mean, yeah, that would be mean. And we're looking at one of, uh, if you haven't seen these on YouTube, we have a walk in the park series I did for a little while. Some people really liked them, um, but a lot of people haven't seen them. And uh, in one particular series, I toured all of Disneyland Paris, but I also did Walt Disney Studios Paris. Um, these are really in-depth, long tours. They're like 15 minutes each, and there's multiple parts to each one. Really gives you a full idea of the park, at least from the vantage point of a first-time visitor, which I was the, when I filmed this. Um, this park. Well, this, this would make this one was pretty short. This, park, this one was like pretty short. Watch along, like for <laughs> director's commentary or something. I mean, I I think anything I needed to say, I just said in the video. I was just talking to people while I walked around. Oh, no, so you do no, talk in them? Okay. People can go watch these whenever they want. Um, 
Yeah, so this park, now let me explain something. I legitimately like this park, even though it's open for nine hours a day. I legitimately like this park. And I like this park because if you came from here, if you grew up going to Florida and you like the MGM Studios, there are some moments of nostalgia that don't exist here anymore that you go in. That doesn't make the park good, but I think as, as someone who grew up with MGM and liked that park, there are things you'll like, like the fact that there's a big earful tower there. That's great. Um, there's still like some of that 30s Hollywood vibe in some places. Is it as great as Hollywood or Sunset Boulevard? No, but it's there. Um, they have some entertainment that's more reminiscent of, of what the park had when it opened. Um, then there's some redeeming things. I think uh, Bistro Chez Remy is uh, one of the most well-themed restaurants Disney has ever built. Um, I think their current iteration of the Tower of Terror that they redid for Halloween and has just stayed is actually really good, and it's a lot for oh, me to yeah. say, considering I think that's the worst version of Tower they've built, that same version they had at DCA. Um, what else? Oh, and, and then they have two of the best stage shows in the history of the parks, which is uh, Mickey's, uh, the Christmas Big Band Show, which, again, is only for the holidays, but it's... Uh, sincerely fantastic and then mickey and the magician which is also really incredible um then for they the just started uh, oh, they oh god there was a rebroadcast of mickey and the magician like the professional shoot i think we just put up the article for oh, that they could just uh, so watch you can go my, watch the professional oh, shoot. watch my shot watch of it, though, which i think is also very professional i shot the shoot. yeah you could do that too <laughs> youtube.com slash w w t but also you can watch disney's whatever you like um, oh yeah, this was during the 25th <laughs> anniversary. I forgot. Um, I As mean, obviously there's a this, lot of like... bad. There's a lot of bad in this park. Um, so like, just looking at what I'm looking at now, like the interior of those stores are as plain as could possibly be. Um, there's nothing really wrong with this courtyard. The fact that the main street is like in a building, it's a fake Hollywood set of like Hollywood Boulevard is weird. It's kind of junky. Um, and then. Once you get through Isn't stage the one, the park is hideous. It is it is ugly. I mean, some of these buildings aren't even yeah. like real permanent structures. So you'll see not on sound stage one, but the other ones, like two and three, which are hidden behind here, it has that like stucco front facade piece, but then the theater itself is actually like a temporary structure. It's kind of like a tent building, like between two oh. stucco walls. Um it's 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 a really ugly bad park it, it's the cheapest one they ever built it has a lot of junk in it crushes coaster is legitimately i think the worst <laughs> disney attraction ever built um the food i the, the park is mostly inedible i i can't think of meals i've had here other than shea remy which i think is pretty solid i I, there's nothing I want to eat in this park. I want to run away every time I'm hungry in this park. Um, it, it's a rough one. It's real rough. The first of anything I bad. saw for this park was like the tower reopening. And I remember watching a video of somebody walking through this building. And I, and I thought that this was a temporary thing. Yeah. I was I, like, oh, cool. They built like a Hollywood street for the tower opening. Uh, but then, no, this is just how it normally is. I don't hate stage one again, because I think it doesn't work. But I think, again, the nostalgia thing kicks in. So like that backdrop reminds me a great movie ride, the load area. Um, there's some facades that are copied. So like uh, the gossip column is just uh, crossroads. Uh, that's Oscars, yeah. the gas station. Um, and then there's some things that feel kind of like different areas, like the back lot and stuff. When you go into these shops and into the restaurant, there's some areas that feel like certain restaurants and stores at MGM. So I do have these nostalgic moments, but I'm able to separate that from the fact that the park is just legitimately terrible. Is yeah. this build, is stage one though, supposed to be like some kind of transition, like story, like in park story wise though, no. where... Where, like, you're going back to, like, Hollywood? No, you're on a or set that emulates 30s Hollywood because the story of the park is not that you are in 30s Hollywood. The story of the park is that it is a studio in Paris. I, I, to my understanding, that's the, oh. all of the thematic consistency of the park is that it, it 
like MGM, which I think for the most part, other than Hollywood and Sunset Boulevard, the idea was you're actually at that place. I think that was also the idea here. Oh, God, the Hepcat. There's some decent things. Why was there. Eisner so obsessed with the studio's idea? Because he did it in Florida, and then I think, then he tried to sell it to Tokyo, and then he did it in Paris. Tried to do it everywhere. Like, what was his deal LA with too. the studio? I mean, it was a good idea to start. People liked it. I mean, MGM was super popular, closed to capacity every day when it first opened. It's it's a when you run a movie studio, like having a park that can continuously change and evolve with every movie release you make and stay current without like not being like Magic Kingdom where there there's these thematic lands and every attraction is a multi-year, multi-million dollar investment. The idea that you could rotate through shows and entertainment and different things related to your current movies and always be in this state of flux is not a bad idea. There are bad ways to do it, but I don't think it's a bad concept. I think it worked for a long time until they decided, and I think very, I believe they decided it didn't work. I don't believe the public decided that the concept didn't work because Universal still okay. exists. I mean, uh, Sir, the park has changed a lot too from getting away from real production but I, thematically it's still you know a studio park you know, were you park. were you there when cinemagique was still around no cinemagique was gone i didn't get to see cinemagique we are ranking parks oh. on their current iterations though as they exist today um so this is a park oh, without okay. cinemagique this is a park without a no. whole left side because uh, <laughs> rock and roller coaster, but I would rank it even with rock and roller coaster. I mean, it's still it's still last, even with what they <laughs> yeah, removed at this the point. I'm not... yeah, the we're... theming of rock and roller coaster came into came into my mind when we were when I was thinking about my listing as well. But like this one's not even th as thematic as the Florida one. It's it's themed to him oh, wanting yeah, exactly. to develop like a technology where you can sync a live concert to a roller coaster. It's weird. The facade is terrible, though. Oh, it was awful. It, it, it looks awful. like a like a CNE thing in Toronto, yeah. which is just it means it's a temporary yeah. roller coaster. If you want to relive rock and roller coaster, we painstakingly fil filmed the facade, the queue, and the ride. It's on our YouTube channel. If you want to see the Paris version, um, I wanted to make sure it was uh, well documented for future generations. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Yeah, I just feel like some other it. parks when they went through these kind of transitions, people didn't document them well. So when I went the first time and a lot of it was still standing, I was like, I'm going to film, you know, Armageddon and Rock and Roller Coaster. I'm going to make sure that there is comprehensive coverage of these, that it exists for the future. Yeah, I don't I don't hate this park. I know some people really hate it. I can go to this park and have a good time. There's again. If Mickey and the Magicians playing or Christmas Big Band, I love both of those. Um, I like their tower now. I think their tower's fun. I want to eat at Shea Remy. I mean, Ratatouille is the most meh attraction I've ever been on. But yeah. So that's number 12, Walt Disney Studios Paris. All right, we move on. Move on to number 11. This is probably what everyone thought was going to be number 12 for me. Uh, number 11 is Shanghai <laughs> Disneyland. And I'm, I'm waiting for all That's the hate right. mail. All the hate mail to pour in because I don't like this park. Um, <laughs> there are good things in this park. Um, Peter Pan's Flight, which you're looking at now. Very much one of those things. Very charming. Really cute. Um, very well done. The Ropes Course, the Adventure Isle Challenge Trail. Um, is unlike anything in any other Disney park in the world. It's very well thought out, a lot of fun. Tron is great. Obviously, you won't have to go here for Tron starting eventually. Um, but the Tron Light Cycle Power Run is a very fun, very short roller coaster. Um, and then there's, there's some other things I like. I think Mickey Avenue's cute. Um, I don't care for the shop interiors, but ex ex the exteriors, it, it's a fine entry land. It works for this park. Um, and the other thing I really like is the hub. The giant hub that's kind of its own land works well. You've spaced things out nicely. You know, you still have some attractions in there. You have Dumbo. You have 
uh, the carousel. Um, and you have plenty of room for nighttime show viewing. You have plenty of room for people. You have plenty of room for parade viewing. Those are the things that work in this park. And if I didn't just mention it in that little piece, I don't think it works. Um, I think there's a lot of lands where I'm just like, this This doesn't do anything for me. I think Tomorrowland aesthetically is gross. It feels like a mall, like a modern mall. There's nothing yeah. interesting <laughs> about it. It's just like there, there's no details to their Tomorrowland. It's literally just swooping facades. They're just swooping facade shapes. There's no props. There's nothing. There's no story. You have no idea where you are, <laughs> when you are what anything is like why why am i going into the game grid of tron okay there's a there's a gun thing that zaps me in i don't know you know is encom here is this like its own thing why is buzz lightyear here how does buzz lightyear exist in the same universe Who it, knows? buzz lightyear never fits in <laughs> it doesn't that but forever. like they built this from scratch in any so part <laughs> But they tried because they removed the toy theme in, in that attraction. He's not a toy. Like, you're actually a space ranger going to help him? Yeah. On a mission, but I don't... I don't know. Their the fantasy land's kind of junky. There's a lot of bad sight lines in it. Like, they, they literally just replicated the Winnie the Pooh ride from 16 years earlier at the Magic Kingdom in 2016 in a park that was supposed to be, oh, radically new and amazing. They they built that junky Winnie the Pooh dark ride for whatever reason. That was like a last minute thing just to add capacity, wasn't yeah, it? it? Like it was the cheapest a option. Good decision though. Um, their Seven Dwarfs yeah. Mine Train is a waste. If you want to, you know, I love that attraction in Magic Kingdom. And then you ride it in Shanghai, you're like, oh, I can see like a, a city and smog from this. There's no good views from it. Oh. And then the end is not nearly as good. The end doesn't have the cottage and everything. It just has like this fiberglass dopey <laughs> waving. Tree. Um, I don't like Adventure Isles kind of bland. Uh, what could have been a really interesting land. I think is really bland and weird. Um, I think the pirate land completely misses the mark. I don't think it captures the movies at all. I think it's way too cartoony. I don't think anything looks believable in it. Um, everything's got that like produced feel, even though it's supposed to be like, I don't know if you're in the, I don't know what, what is it supposed to be, the 1800s? I don't know. Yeah, it doesn't at all feel like you're in the world of the movie or uh, I don't know. Uh, the the castle's good. I, I really do like the castle. I didn't have the castle on my good stuff. The, I think the castle turned out really well. Um, but that's, there's just a lot. They're to, they have Toy Story Land, which is always a waste. Just junky, barely <laughs> themed. I don't know. It, a lot of bad sight the lines in this park, which is the, like you're looking at one now. I, I see that chill building right down the center of that facade as clear as day. Yeah. Um, but just, this there are hallmarks lands. of Imagineering in the 2016 to, to now generation, and uh, I'm not always crazy about everything they do now. This Tomorrowland looks like, you know in the movie Tomorrowland where they finally get to the actual Tomorrowland and it's yeah. like empty and there's no one there's there? There's another bad sight. That's what it way. looks like. <laughs> Uh, just like, all these all these walkways. I don't know if you saw that, nothing you can see them. the big RC racer track from the Tron entrance for, you know, whatever reason. Their pirates. Is this the pirates is, in part? I think their pirates is the most overrated Disney attraction ever built. I think the ride system you is You are the great. only person I am not who says that it's the bad. Two people I went with agreed. Jonathan, who helped me plan my trip before I even left, was like, I'm curious what you'll think of pirates because I don't like it. Um, it feels Everyone like Universal raves ride. It, about pirates. It is, how it's it is the only best ride better. at Shanghai Disneyland. What was that? Everyone I know who goes to Shanghai, they're like, pirates is the best ride at Shanghai Disneyland. You have to go to Shanghai just for pirates. I think people have poor taste. Or that, or they saw a very well maintained new attraction that is very different from what we saw when we went. The the thing was was not not a lot of things were working. The whole finale scene, I know. Hasn't worked since opening where the, the table like vanishes and the treasure turns to dirt or something. Like that whole end effect hasn't worked since the beginning. Um, the ride system is cool, but it relies too much on screens. It's not impressive. Some of the set designs questionable. Like there's a wrecked boat 
but it looks brand new. Like, it doesn't even look like it's underwater. It has, like, a sheen to it. It looks like a yeah. Playmobil. If you ever on, like, a Playmobil pirate ship, it's got, like, this plastic <laughs> sheen to the bottom because it's one, like, solid like piece mat. of plastic. That's what some of the set stuff in Pirates looked like. Uh, it's a cool ride system. I hope they do something else with it. I don't think it was the best thing they could do with it. I was super disappointed. Yeah, I'm not. Uh, this park doesn't do anything for me. I'm in no rush to return under any circumstances. <laughs> and at the moment, Tron is like the only like, if you could word it this way, the only park exclusive type attraction or like sort of the featured one. But then that's yeah. that's just going to not even be the case. But they're not even they're not really worth mentioning other than the ropes course. Uh, the Roaring Rapids is junk. Um, the animatronic turned out bad. You can see like his whole the crocodile crevice, thing? and all it does, like the breast of the body does it. The concept art was so cool. And then to see that figure and it's just like this big, like puppet head that just swivels oh. from left to right. It was super disappointing. Um, cause that could have been cool. Like I think that rapids ride where there's like this creature sort of stalking you the whole ride would have been neat. Instead, it's just this misty cave, and then there's, like, this kind of junky animatronic at the end of it. Um, Sorry, is this Tron ride trying to make a story that there's, like, other teams? I know there is other teams, yeah, but you there's, do, like, an orange there's a screen team, part the where you one. race against an orange, yeah. Yeah, you're going onto the grid to have, like, a light cycle battle. Yeah, I mean, that makes sense to me story-wise. It fits in with the movie. I don't know. Tron's good. It's, it's short. It's fun. Um, it's going to be a thing That's when it's a Magic Kingdom I'm going to want to do every time I visit. I, I'm all for this. This was done well, with the exception That's of the show. an interesting building. IP choice with how badly Tron Legacy was received. People know what Tron is, though, and I don't think, even if you don't like the movies, I think the light cycle is cool to everybody. People will buy light cycle merchandise just because it looks cool. Um, it, it sells merchandise. It looks like a fun ride that will make people want to visit. I completely understand going forward with this, even though the franchise isn't necessarily always a surefire hit. I think the ride um, is a surefire hit, no matter what. But like it, okay. It's super short. I mean, this inside part's not great. Kind of like there's some shapes and there's some lights. I mean, it's Tron, though. I don't know what yeah. else you do. I mean, even the movie, the Tron Legacy, at least had the character of Tron in it. And this one doesn't. I, they don't have any characters in this at all. I mean, you're racing someone there, so there's someone in it. I don't know. I don't think the characters are essential. Again, not everyone even knows much about Tron other than the fact that there are light cycles in it. So I think... I don't think it matters. Yeah, that's that's kind of where most people's baseline is. Like, not everyone's going to know who Kevin Flynn is and yeah. and all that stuff. Yeah, no one knows the plot. It's like singing in the Which rain. Which is sad because I, those are actually good movies too. Like, I do like Tron Legacy, um, despite some of its flaws. But it's kind of sad that people, you're gonna once it opens at Disney World, you're gonna get more recognition from the ride than the movies. I would bet. People are going to know Tron because of the ride. I mean, I think yeah. they know Tron in general already. Like, I think they're, they're, people know it exists. I don't think it's something that's outside of the, you know, pop culture subconscious. I think most people, even like people who don't care, know, at least have heard of it, I think. You know? Maybe, yeah. It's been around for a long time. Like, yeah, the 80s movie didn't do well, but people still are aware of Tron. No, he's having them. Yeah. All right. they, they keep trying to make that... Sorry, go ahead. I was going to move on, so if you have something to say, say it. Oh, I mean, I was just going to say, like, they keep trying to make that franchise work, I guess, and the ride well, must just be part of that. there always seems to be people who want it, but then when you put it out there, the rest of the world's like, nah. Maybe. Anyway, that's all I got. All right, number 10. Epcot. <laughs> I mean... I ranked it a lot higher, but, but I mean, the but child, like said, the like child in me is mad, personnel. but the adult yeah. in me understands what Epcot is right now. So it is what it is. Um, so what's good about Epcot? I mean, 
in its current form, I guess. It's not the best version of Spaceship Earth. Car Shield Earth, is good we, about Epcot. But we still have Spaceship Earth, which is good. <laughs> um, living with the land still exists, and that's something unique and different and you can't see in any other Disney yeah. park in the world, which is great. Um, the seas? Uh, the Nemo ride isn't stunning, but that end is still pretty cool with those those fish swimming in the real tank. Um you know, just in total, like just that whole the ability to go see dolphins get trained and um, you know, eat at the coral reef and watch the fish go by. It's it's a good pavilion. Um, and then otherwise food. I mean, obviously there's a lot of good food in this park. The festivals are a big draw. People like them. There's fun stuff to do at festivals. Um so there there are good things about Epcot, but the bad really is that everything of value otherwise is gone. And there's not a whole lot to do. Like people complain that Hollywood Studios didn't have a lot to do, but I think right now Hollywood Studios, even though they've reduced capacity despite claiming it's an expansion, um, there's more to do than there is at Epcot. I mean, I mean, there's a lot of shopping and dining, but just as far as attractions, and and I, and I use attractions loosely. It doesn't have to be a ride, um, but there's there's not a lot. I mean. Mission Space, which no one really likes. There's New Test Track, which hasn't aged well. There's the Figment Ride, which is trash. There's a short film festival, <laughs> which is a bunch of shorts in also 3D trash. that you can watch at home. Awesome Planet is garbage. I'm not the biggest Soren fan, but I guess I'd put that on the positive side. People really like that attraction. I mean, but even that's not as good as it was. Um, American Adventure is great. That's another cool old imagineering thing you can see um they used to have a great nighttime show now they don't <laughs> i don't know used to park, have the greatest have a, nighttime show as much as people complain this Disney park, park was boring i think it's way more boring now i um, i know i know guardians will do a lot to dispel that but um they're also getting a ratatouille ride that i already don't like in paris so i didn't know there was a japanese version of spaceship earth that's I, I should try that. <laughs> Maybe if you hit it, the ride like has an actual ending. <laughs> yeah, Jesus. even like Spaceship Earth is still like as great as it is that it's there. Th this thing is still the most outdated thing ever. Yeah, but I also don't want. I the feel like you could have bringing in because they're gonna like thematically crush, you know, this attraction, and they're gonna mess with scenes that haven't been touched since the 80s and really just moving figures around doesn't tell your story any better, so maybe just leave them where the hell they are. <sighs> I don't, a lot of their choices baffle me. It's too bad that they couldn't have kept uh, the Jeremy Irons version and just spruced up the finale because that was what was really outdated. Otherwise, it was fine the finale before they did wasn't, all this. Though. People were talking on screens like across the world, that is still very much the it world we live like in now. It still looked like it was from nineteen. It you're, still you're, looked like nineteen ninety four. That is twenty six years later, and it's still like <laughs> relevant. They were talking on screens it's, to each other. It's what we do now. Like it, it wasn't outdated. It, it looked like it was nineteen ninety four. They just no. needed to reshoot it. That's it. No. They, they have to keep gonna, chasing the, the future. Clothes, okay, That's maybe you want to change the clothes on the animatronics, but even then. They were wearing normal clothes. Like, I think the grandpa's wearing, like, a sweater vest. Like, they weren't wearing anything, like, specific of the time. The I don't know. The screen is so dark. <laughs> Every time. Yeah. <laughs> so. I was, uh, when I was ranking these for, like, my own purposes i was thinking about it from like just what park is the best representation of what the park should be which is why i put like dlp studios right at the bottom as well mm -hmm. because that compared to how hollywood studios used to be like that studios park is not even the best studios park i almost feel like but studios I paris is there. more consistent with its with its mission statement than epcot is though I mean, Epcot now has a Beauty and the Beast yeah. sing along. Yeah, you yeah. You know, Awesome Planet is like Canada movies terrible. A weird like 
you should go do something. What? We don't know, but do something for the planet. <laughs> we can't take a stance anymore, but just go do something. You can go find out on the internet what's good to do, and then yeah, you can go do to this it. website. <laughs> like that. Is that yeah, really that's what Awesome what Planet is. does? Oh my gosh, yeah. It ends with them being like, visit this website and use this hashtag. And it's like, ew. Yeah. I mean, if anything is proof that you can be consistent to your vision, but still make things more exciting, I think Pandora is a, is a good example of that. Pandora doesn't cop out and go to like, oh, let, let's, in these attractions, we're going to have it be like, you know, you versus this evil RDA. Instead, it's hundreds of years later, and it's the RDA did these mean things, but now we've learned like all this fun stuff. But then like instead you've you've matched it to the theme of the park, but it still remains exciting and you've done it with an IP, but you're still teaching, you know, people to, to conserve and like save the environment and all of these things. But you're doing it with an IP and in a fun, exciting way. Like that's what Epcot should be, but you're not doing that. Instead you're gonna make Spaceship Earth about storytelling? Yeah, I don't understand. The part should be the, focused the on thing, innovation. Even with how recent Pandora is, it feels like it's a different era in Imagineering. Well, it's, it it's different people. Different people, yeah. It was different people who had different goals and ideas in mind than what what people are doing now. Yes. Yeah. I one of the biggest I I was supposed to be at Disney World right now actually um and one of the mo Me biggest too. reasons I was disappointed it <laughs> uh yeah but you live there so it's not as it's not a big deal um I I was disappointed because I wanted to see Spaceship Earth before they basically bulldoze half of the ride I I'm really disappointed that I might miss out on that now uh yeah. when I come back next year. Yeah. All right. I Number... mean, that's all I got there. <laughs> we'll move on. Number nine. Number nine. Hong Kong Disneyland. Oh. There's oh. not enough. There's not enough in it. Um, what it does have, there are some things that are so great that it eclipses at least the parts Damn. I've listed already. That's one of them. Mystic Point. Uh, that's yes. Mystic Manor. <laughs> Mystic Manor is the greatest Disney attraction on this planet currently. And yes, I'm including Rise of the Resistance in that thought process. You know, um, I understand you, Rise is great. I'm not saying Rise isn't great. I just think Rise relies on screens in some places where I wouldn't have. And Mystic Manor, I never feel like... I feel like when they do use screens, it's so well done that I don't even think about it. That's when you're using screens effectively. When a guest doesn't even think about the fact that there are screens and projections being used, that means you've done it right. Um, and in Rise of the Resistance, I, I very much am aware that the stormtroopers are on screen. I'm very much aware of that. I'm also aware that the animatronics aren't the best you're capable of. They're definitely not the shaman. They, they have some funky moves. All that still, it's a great attraction, but I'm, I'm, again, I'm trying to reason why I think Mystic Manor is better, and I think it's better because it's more quintessentially Disney. It combines so many of the great things they've done before in a thoughtful new way. It, it's like a 1960s Disney classic that was somehow built in 2013. Um, it, it's really wonderful. Great story, great characters, beautifully laid out scenes, really fun great music amazing cue yeah i mean I, I mean everything about it top to bottom the little land it's in the restaurant next door is great i love several dishes at that restaurant are really great um love it love mystic point love mystic manor and then um you also have grizzly gulch i think grizzly gulch and uh grizzly mountain runaway mine cars are uh, it's really underrated it's a very cute little frontier land it's got a lot of charm it's laid out really well where this roller coaster is on both sides of the main pathway. Um, and it, it, it's a, one that the whole family could go on. It's the Everest ride system, but um, it, it doesn't have as big of a drop or anything. It's fun for anyone of any size. It's a really fun backstory. 
um, cute animatronic bears. Um, it goes forwards and backwards, and there's explosions. And um, it's just a really pretty land. It's a land I want to spend more time in. I wish there was more in it. I wish there were more. I wish there was a shop. I wish there was a bigger restaurant, but I understand like they knew they were building a big restaurant with Mystic Point, so they didn't really need one. And this attraction wasn't going to have a lot of merchandise as it is now. It doesn't even have any. Um, so the merchandise sort of faded away. Um, but it's a it's a really cute little ride, um, and I, I, the land is super charming. Um, what else is good? I mean, they still have Paint the Night, which is great. It's good to have a nighttime parade. Um, and I think it's not great, but they do have the one Toy Story Land I feel works. Um, it was the first one they were going to build, and I almost feel like it was it was particularly designed for them. Um, it's still not my favorite. They're cheap off-the-shelf rides, but at least with the mountains in the background and the foliage they did, you legitimately feel like you're in like a different place. You don't feel like... You're just steps away from other lands in the park. You do feel like you're shrunken down, not that everything's just oversized. Um, just Again, there's this giant mountain behind it, which just sets the scale so well. Um, again, I don't go on the rides in that land. I don't spend time in it, but I can appreciate that it works in this park, and you needed to add more rides to this park quickly before even you brought... You know, and again, as far as an expansion plan goes, you built that, but then you also built Mystic Manor and this, which are both great, great rides. Um, but then the, the problem with the park is the rest. I mean, there's not a lot else. The other recent stuff is bad. Um, the, the Marvel stuff is super disappointing because I love, I mean, everyone loves those movies. I just think Ant Man and the Wasp Nano Battle and Iron Man Experience are both kind of boring. They're not, they're not very good. Um, the Tomorrowland's a mess. Um, they're still doing Hyperspace Mountain, but for some reason it's not as well done as the California one was. It's hard to see some projections, some things are in the wrong place. I mean, that Space Mountain's not as good to begin with. It was built with a really cheap queue, the real junky queue. Um, and they have the worst Jungle Cruise ever built. It's, it's this big flat Jungle Cruise, and the animals are just placed all willy-nilly like some animals even placed backwards like just they're like well i don't know do something interesting with them put them put one backwards um it was such a cool idea to put like the jungle cruise going around the river and have the tree house in the middle it's real picturesque they're eventually it's very pretty um but that's th this park is number nine solely based on its charm and manor and grizzly um the, the park is so intimate and charming that you can't help but fall in love with it once you get there. Like, I remember halfway through the first day just being like, I love this park. Um, it just feels so inviting and cute. Um, it didn't matter that there when was you build a, to do. When you build a park that's based on Disneyland, of course it's going to feel, you know, small and intimate and yeah, charming. Worked, I mean, that's what Disneyland is. Yeah, I mean, Disneyland was. It, yeah. It's a pretty big park now. Um, but in the sixties, you got to think like, this is basically Disneyland in the sixties, um, where you've opened pirates and mansion. So you have pirates and mansion in this case, grizzly and mystic. Um, but you know, still the other stuff's maybe a little antiquated. The park still doesn't have much. It's, it's really a day park for locals. Um, I just hope they'll continue with the expansion stuff. I know frozen, it's too late to cancel it at this point. And I think honestly, I like what they're doing. I like that. In addition to getting Frozen Ever After, which is a fine dark ride, I like that they're also getting Seven Dwarfs Mine Train, but as in a Frozen theme. Like I'm, I'm okay with that. I think it's a good plan. That's a fun coaster. It's good for the whole family. Yeah. Um, it, those are two really thing. good additions for that Fantasyland to get. So I'm on, I'm on board with that. Otherwise, there's some good snacks in this park. There's good. The food's decent enough. Um, yeah, I I don't know, I like this park, but it it has to be number 9 just for the the lack of content, I think. Mhm. Mm I see. No one has anything else to say about Hong Kong? No. You pretty much nailed everything that I was going to say. Yeah. If you want to watch, by the way, all the videos we're showing today are on our YouTube channel. So if you want to watch Mystic uh Manor in full or Grizzly 
the Grizzly Gulch uh, or Big Grizzly Mountain Runaway Mine Cars. I'm sorry, it's a long name. I always forget it. Um, they're both on there. I filmed them both. So enjoy them. They're both great. Do we have Paint the Night? We do. I actually just filmed Paint the Night last trip. Um, and it was great because okay. no one stood around me at the end of the route. I am completely alone, so a lot of the performers, like, come over and, like, oh, wave cool. at me and stuff. Yeah, I was alone. Like, no one was near me. It was like <laughs> going to a theme park later this year. I, I was just, like, the only person oh. for, like, I was the only person for, like, 70 feet. So. Except they're actually running parades. <laughs> yeah. I mean, Hong Kong is, is positioned to be the most unaffected just because of their crowd levels. I think they, they will be able to handle this well. Um, like you said, it's a locals park. park. It is, and they've, I mean, they've had their attendance problems in the last year because of the protests, and they're certainly going to have problems now based on other things going on. So, look at that. I mean, I, I had my I Hong Kong trip that. in March. I had my Hong Kong trip in March canceled, but the second it's safe and I can travel to Hong Kong safely, I'm going. Look at this, you ready I, for I really want to see this park. It's beautiful practical effect. Beautifully done. People always talk to say to us, like, oh, you can't make a ride without IPs now. I'm like, look at Mystic Manor. Yeah. My goodness. And this thing sells the merchandise. Matter. They can't keep that damn music box in stock. You know? Oh, I would I immediately. You finally got the music box. I did, box. but the first trip, it, it had come into stock a week before we got there and then was gone. To my understanding, by the time I left, um, or like a week after I left, before they closed, the, the music box was gone again. The Mystic Manor stuff sells great. People love it. It has its own store. It still has its own line of merchandise. You know? Well, when you, when you create something that can tie in well and you connect, with, like with Albert, Albert or Figment or original characters like that that you can you sell merchandise on, it's basically love, as like. good as... Pirates it's, and it's basically as good as an IP. Built, I mean, like these great things that people fell in love with, and instead now you're like, yeah. oh no, let's just play it safe and just build things we know people like already. But I, I think so much of what people love about the Disney parks is going and seeing something unexpected and then being blown away, which I think is what Mystic does. Yeah, absolutely. I believe we filmed the D23 panel. On we, Mystic Manor, like the creation also of it, the like, full D twenty three panel with the imagination. Everyone needs to watch that behind this, and they talk about how they develop certain scenes and the music and all sorts of fun stuff. It's really cool. All right, uh, number eight, Disney's Hollywood Studios. Yeah, we really can agree on that. <laughs> uh, what's good? I mean, Galaxy's Edge is good. Rise of the Resistance is obviously good. I don't know about Smuggler's Run. It's fine. Um, you have the original <laughs> Tower of Terror, which is great. Great to have that. Um, Rock and Roller Coaster is fun. Um, I think you have the most charming Main Street in any Disney park in the world between Hollywood and Sunset Boulevard. Uh, you have Muppet Vision, the only one left. Who doesn't love Muppet Vision? And uh, have, I mean, it's not a good Fantasmic, but you have Fantasmic and people really like it, even though it's really it's the worst Fantasmic. No, the worst Fantasmic closed. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Do you mean Tokyo? There will yeah, be a fight no, about this one. later. But I only love Tokyo. No, you know? I'm, not, I'm never fair with my thoughts. Uh, yeah. All right, so that's that's what works in studios. And then what's bad? Well, obviously. Toy Story Land. Thank you, Sarah Callan. She's enjoying the show, so she gave us ten dollars. Thank you. We appreciate it. Oh, thank you. Number uh, with the bad yeah, things. Toy Story Land, obviously, it's junk. Yeah, I don't know how you build a land without shade in Florida. You've been building lands and the parks worst. here for forty something years. You know what you're supposed to do. It's it's garbage. You budget cut stuff out of it. You have a lot of old shows. Why they still exist, I don't know. You built whole, like, little lands for Mermaid and Beauty and the Beast. Why are these shows still running? For the love of God, develop something new. Yeah. Like, what are you doing? The Grand Avenue. <laughs> the worst land in any Disney park in the world. It has it's no not even theme. a land. It has no story. It, it is trash. It is absolute I thought it garbage. was, like... 
twenties LA or something like that. It is like modern that. day like, Los Angeles. No, it's not anything. And it has oh. no fun details. It has I don't know. It's just nothing about it. Is it? Well, they they reskid Street of America for that, didn't they? Yeah, it was That's a facade, but like even the reskin isn't interesting. There's nothing interesting about those buildings. They made like one, oh, look, it's a meat market, but there's no like fun details. There's like, oh, we hung some meat in the window. Isn't that fun? No, that's not how details work. You're not setting any sense of place or story because that's what I mean. Like you said, oh, isn't that 20s LA? No one even knows when and where they're supposed to be in that land. No one has any idea. The Muppets certainly don't even make sense there. Pizza Rizzo, they had to make it so it's a New York pizzeria opening in LA location. Why didn't you just make it New York? <laughs> what are you doing? Um, and the other thing is they've, they've killed, this park has no unique personality. You just now have themed lands to ba based on IP. This doesn't make this different from a castle park. It just feels, it just feels like everything else they've built in the last couple of years, but there, there's no consistency in this park. I don't understand the, the, the theme of the park is movies. The theme of the park is just that movies exist and we like them. <laughs> uh, it's stupid. Yeah. It's stupid. It, it, we hope you can dine at whatever's left at this here Disney's Hyperia XL theme park. <laughs> this, this would be park number 11 if Rise wasn't as good as it is and you didn't have Tower and those good things I mentioned. I would put, the, put this park at 11. It would be almost as bad as the other studios. I think I think with if you go to the time period before Rise opened, I think this park is number eleven. With Rise open, yep. I think it puts it it puts it here. We went for stage eighty nine, and I think we spent the least amount of time at studios. Yeah. Like after you've done everything there, which is at that point a year ago from now, not that much. You, there's nothing to really bring you back. Yeah. Nothing changes. I, you, why can't you have, you have this Beauty and the Beast stage, which like, why can't you do more than one show there? Or why there, can't you there are put places. another show there? Yeah, why, that, at least put another one, but you show, could right? do multiple shows. There's no reason you can't. <laughs> you're, yeah. you're Disney, the you have all the costumes. The costumes for that show are just horrifying. Those costumes oh, are horrifying. Yeah. They're like almost as bad as the scary godmother in Tokyo. They're horrible. But the the larger problem <laughs> for this park, and this park's going to drop on this ranking uh, in the next couple of years. The problem with this park is there there won't be any uniqueness to it because already, I mean, Galaxy's Edge already exists. It's in California, uh, and then Runaway Railway is going to exist at Disneyland in California. So again. If you come from, if you've been to Disneyland and, and, and Runaway Railway is going to exist in other places, and so is is this at some point. Paris is going to build some Star Wars thing at some point. Um, there's not going to be a lot of reasons for people that are near or closer to those other places to come here and go see these particular things. There's nothing, there's very little unique about this park. Toy Story Mania exists in other places. What what am I going? I'm going. I'm going to go to this park specifically for what Slinky Dog Dash and Outdoor Roller Coaster, with no <laughs> theme. Oh yes, how what a unique thing to go visit this park. For. I mean, Rock and Roller Coaster and is unique and it still draws people. And Tower of Terror is very distinct compared yeah. to the ones across the world. Those are your draws. Those are what's unique Those about this park. Those aren't going to live forever. Like clearly with this management. Th those are not going to live forever, well, especially you don't Rock think, and Roller Coaster. You don't think Tower of Terror is going to stay no, there forever? I don't. They'll fight with CBS at some point. It, it, it's inevitable. Huh. It's they, inevitable. It might even be they some don't Guardians. Own, unless they buy the Twilight Zone, I don't... And I don't think they're going to. Um, there's no reason to. CBS would... I also don't think CBS would let go of it. Um... They're they're already retheming our okay. rock and roller coaster to Iron Man, and we have Iron Man, and they already have a tower that's been rethemed to Guardians. Yeah, I can't imagine they wouldn't just turn that whole street into Marvel. I I mean, they don't I have mean, the rights. I think Marvel's going to Epcot with 
But I mean, with, there will um, certainly be other guardians. Adventures. There will certainly. But yeah, be with other guardians, adventures. that's going to be at Epcot, and and either way, I mean the the Florida ride system is too different. If they were to throw guardians in there and make it mission breakout, it would still have to basically be a new ride because it's so different from the California version. I don't know about that. They'll figure it out. I mean, yeah, it's not going to happen because we have guardians, but some something's going to happen. I, the rock and roller coasters is very, is not long for this world. I would say in three to five years, rock and roller coasters definitely gone. Oh, that's too bad. I wouldn't even base this, like, you based this park's merits off of the fact that Galaxy's Edge is there. I wouldn't even do that because it felt like when they were like, oh, okay, let's put this one in Magic, uh, let's put this one in Disneyland. Where does it go? Magic Kingdom? No. Well, not Epcot. Certainly not Animal Kingdom. I, well, let's just Studios drop it in the, is the Star Wars Park. It's always been the Star Wars Park. Yeah. I mean, yeah, but it's with clear Star the Tours, land was designed for for Disneyland. They were more concerned about thematically fitting it in Disneyland. The transitions are really well thought out. And then you get here, and it's like, oh, tile tunnel that turns sideways and turns to rock. Okay, and then like that t Toy Story Land transition. I don't need to tell you is is terrible. Like they're legitimately <laughs> yeah. is like Toy Story Land theming on Batu when you get towards the end of that walkway. I mean, they're the, Why? the, the Andy's yard <laughs> garbage cans are like in Batu. Why did they not make a toy box that says Star Wars on it? Why? I'm sure it, 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 you had, it, was, it was the most genius idea too. No, they're not allowed to have fun. Star Wars has toys. Kathleen Kennedy You're hates just... fun. <laughs> <laughs> fun is illegal, you know that. I'm gonna write <laughs> <laughs> be, it's fun. Fun's illegal, you know that. Your solo movie's too funny. Fire the directors. Yeah, that worked out for them. All right, that's that's Hollywood Studios number eight. Number seven. No, no one's gonna say it. All right. Seven. seven. Yeah, seven. Awesome. Thank you. Number you seven, mean? Disney <laughs> California Adventure. Yay, we agreed on this too. <laughs> um, I'm surprised you have it this low. A lot of, what do you mean low? Cars Land is like your There's favorite a lot thing of ever. There's garbage I'm... in this park though. Outside of Cars Land. This park would have been another two up, I think, in 2013 or four, even maybe 2017. The last three Basically years Basically before been Pixar Pier. The last three years have been catastrophic for this park. Um, uh, Pixar, Pixar Pier, and now Marvel uh, thematically crushed this park. What, what little, what, and I mean they were going in the right direction. Um, obviously, Cars Land I think is the best themed land they've built. I think it's inviting, and everyone wants to go to it. It's unique. It's only in one place. It feels like enough of a reason to want to go to California. Um, it, it feels special because it is. It is a very, spe you're looking at Halloween now, but that's the other thing they do great. Their seasonal stuff is just better than anyone else in the world. And I, I, that includes Tokyo. I think they do seasonal stuff better in California than anywhere else. Um, this is a great land with great food. Um, this park has great food. That's another reason this park is, is beaten a lot of other parks. I, I can name a lot of places I would eat in this park, I think. Even like award wieners, I don't like the hot dogs, but they do like these loaded fries all the time that are really great. They do the funnel cake fries there, which are awesome. Schmoozies consistently has the best desserts at any Disney park in the world. They did that peanut butter and jelly mummy donut. They've had some really great uh, shakes the last year or so. Um, that cookies and cream shake is outrageous. Um, Flo's has always had a really good menu. I like the current menu now. The pot, even the vegetarian pot pie is delicious. Great. Their fried chicken's as good as Plaza, I think. Um, then even you get to the These back of the park. Are great. Uh, Paradise Gardens Grill has a really good menu that changes seasonally, and uh, generally everything's real good there. Um, you have the Corn Dog Castle. Angry Dogs are pretty good. I like the spicy hot dog. You have the Cookie Num Nums. The Cozy Cones. The flavored popcorn, the chili cone carne, like 
I can just go eat at this park. I just want to spend the day eating at this park. I didn't even mention Carthay Circle, which is a great sit down for dinner. Um, even I like Taste Pilots, uh, not Taste Pilots anymore. Now it's um, Smoke Jumpers, but that's good. You have Giardelli, the Bread Tour, which is fun. A lot of good stuff in so this park. I'm also, no uh, Mission Breakout, which despite what anyone says, is a fantastic ride. Way better than Tower there ever was. You have World of Color, which I think is still the nighttime show to beat all nighttime shows, including its Christmas version. Um, Grizzly Peak Airfield was a great update. It's a really fun theme. Um, the Frozen musical was better than the actual Frozen musical on Broadway. This park has a lot of great. The problem is there's a lot of junk. There's this weird Avengers campus that's going to be crammed in. Pixar Pier is one of the worst things they've ever done. It's thematic trash. Um, you, have, you still have a lot of junky rides. You have a lot of those pier rides that they kept are, are kind of bleh. Um, Grizzly River Run's not the greatest thing ever. Filler Magic is, oh, it's so bad that they shoehorn that in. It's such junk. So there's, there's oh, some things yeah. that really hold this park back from being two or three more rungs up. But what I do love about this park is spectacular. What I'm hearing is that before I visit California, I need to starve myself so that I can snack the yeah, whole way well, through. The food, the food <laughs> is so good. A lot of good food. The separate hotel entrance is long, go long gone. What's this? Oh, God, look how cool they that is. They don't have that anymore. That closed a long time ago. Uh, but then see, oh, this Christmas show is so great. I mean, they do the festivals, too, which are solid. Um, I don't know if they really add anything to this park. I think they kind of hurt this park more than they hurt Epcot. I think operationally they, they stopped them from doing parades anymore. But, uh, I'm I, curious, would you put World of Color above Illuminations as a nighttime show? Personally, yeah. I know a lot of people wouldn't, but I, I like World of Color better than Illumination. Hmm. The show looks more like intimate, like the way it is wrapped around. Like it's not as big a lake a, as Illuminations is. Beautiful way to do all these things they had done already, and certainly there was a lot of new technology, and it was revolutionary. But no one, you know, like the Bellagio had a fountain. Um, but like the idea of like we're going to use lasers and lights and all these other weird things to do a water only fountain show using like that Bellagio fountain technology. And the fact that it's going to make you feel emotions and yeah, I mean, World of Color, I think is very special. I think it's, it's a very cool and special thing. Yeah. It was it was a first of its kind. It, it seems, and I, uh, World of Color is one of the few things I, I try to keep most parks fresh, and World of Color is one of the few things I've seen from California Adventure. Um, it feels like a, the best way to integrate IP into something. This just you. There's a lot of wrong ways to integrate IP and to shoehorn it in, but I really feel like they were able to use it well with World of Color, even though it kind of is a, a clip show, essentially. But the it technology is. that lays under it is spectacular. It's and a clip show, but it the, also isn't. Like, there is, like, a there. there's a driving narrative, which is World of Color, like the song. I mean, it, it goes yeah. through, you know, the yeah. blue rolling sea, and you start with Little Mermaid, and then the sky, you have, like, Buzz Lightyear and Wally, and you go through and up and you go through the sky and into space um it it has a very natural flow to it and there is a story to it is it a clip show also yeah but i think i think happily ever after took the story mold from world of color and that's why it works and you use a number of different movies to tell a narrative you know and, and yeah give a and, and that's to possible to do yeah, there's some shows that don't do that very well. Like there's some the Disney World version it. of Once Upon a Time, it just doesn't work. I mean, Once Upon a Time, I don't think was was some revolutionary thing in Japan either. But no, it wasn't. Well, it was revolutionary to us, but it wasn't for Disney. Yeah, uh, no, I, Once Upon a Time is fine. I don't think it's anything great. I, I mean, certainly the Japanese yeah. version was better, but I don't think either was like a thing I I pine for. 
Um, no, what I mean is that it, it doesn't really work as well as Happily Ever After and World of Color no. do. And I, I think that they've really, they, they, they figured out what works. And it's the World of Color where you have this underlying kind of narrative to it like this. Yeah. Yeah, the reason I put it so low was for stuff like Pixar Pier, where they it didn't need to be rethemed. It was perfectly yeah. fine as like the boardwalk kind of aesthetic, especially re-themed. because it was yeah, it, and it was shoehorned by not shoehorned. It was it was placed around the coaster, which is meant to be a boardwalk coaster, and then just what they did by making it all Pixar, like the color scheme for Pixar Pier, I think is great. But it aesthetically, changes it, theme it, as you walk around, like it changes time period. So like you go to like oh, yeah. 60s Googie style with the uh, with Incredibles, but then like you're back in the 30s again with the Toy Story section. But then, you know, you're in like the 60s and 70s with Inside Out. It's, it's all over the place. All over Forcing the place. it to be Incredibles was probably the worst thing. Yeah. It could have been fine as that. It could have just been a coaster at Pixar Pier. But like you said many times, babies on sticks. It's nothing, yeah. nothing says effort like a static figure. Yeah, and I won't deny like... The, uh, the process of updating this park was certainly a lot easier than what they're going through with Epcot. Epcot had a thematic vision that you had to keep true to. This park really doesn't. You just have to find a loose way to tie it to like the company's history in California, which is what they did. I mean, Cars Land is car culture in California go hand in hand. It made sense. It's Route 66, another big part of California's history. Absolutely. Like, it worked. You found a way to beautifully tie IP into a park where it makes sense. Um, You know, 30s Hollywood and the arrival of Walt Disney and the early stuff they did. Again, you you really hit the nail on the head. Um, But then with the pier, they didn't know what to do. They didn't know what to do. And then Marvel. And now Marvel is just, I don't know what. It should have just been a movie studio. Just put people in the movie studio. I don't need to go... I don't need it to be the California campus of the Avengers. Like, it's nonsense. It's a load of nonsense. <laughs> the, and the pier was fine. I mean, Santa Monica is pretty... The Santa Monica Pier is pretty iconic, and that's yeah, clearly what this drew to make it, dramatic. it was an ugly land. Paradise Pier was, was brutally ugly. They were, like, in you process. Could've... It was one of the things where they were like, we're not going to put all the money of this expansion plan into fixing Paradise Pier. We're going to put just enough so that it looks presentable, which I think in a lot of places they did. I think Paradise Gardens Grill, that whole area is very nice. Um, I think the Mermaid Building's pretty. You had some work to do on the backside where yeah. Screaming was. You definitely had stuff that could still use more work, but I, where you went with it, I'm not a fan of. We and just, and just one the other thing about opening. this park. All right, go on, Spencer. I was just going to say, just one other thing about this park is soaring around the world should not be here. This should still be soaring over California. Mm-hmm. Epcot and Tokyo yeah. and Shanghai can have around the world. But the park well, is literally California Adventure. Months, so it's fine. They should just keep it. Like, Well, now it's like a cool decision, marketing but... ploy for the Food and Wine Festival. I think it's pretty smart. Yeah. You have they both can make run people... it's like The thing is, like, as fans, we all dislike the around the world and clearly like most of the public agrees at least in california but if you do both of them then like you give people a reason to write it twice a year to write each version right and i'm not opposed to that i guess i mean they could also in theory do one theater runs around the world and the other one runs over california into capacity problems and it just depends on a given day what people want to ride you don't want to do that they were going to do that with star Uh, tours Um, exactly where one was yeah, be, where half that. of them were going to be old trilogy the other half were going to be new trilogy and then they decided that was a terrible idea because you didn't know what you couldn't predict what guests wanted to ride and you were essentially just cutting either version in, in the capacity in half it was a bad idea i guess all right moving on number six disneyland paris um again yeah. really I know it's cool to crap on this park. A lot of people like to do that. I love this park. 
Um, 90s Imagineering, I think, is the, the golden age. I think absolutely the golden age of Imagineering. Um, I think they had learned everything they were going to learn. They knew what they were doing. Um, and this was like the magnum opus. We're gonna, this is the most beautiful of the castle parks, far and away. There is no contest. If this, if this park had had money to do things, you know, between opening and now, I, I almost think that, that there, is such, there is a capa uh, it is capable of being number one. If they had done, if they had put in like another e-ticket and some other thoughtful updates, I think this would be the number one park in the world, or at least would be fighting with Disney C for one and two, I think. Um, but I, I think there's some things that hold it back. Ugly decorations are probably one of those things. The 25th decoration are pretty ugly. Uh, <laughs> but it's a beautiful park. They did a beautiful job. It's so detail-oriented, and everything's ornate and beautiful. This main street. And I think about every time I think about, like, what, what, which lands and which parks really sum up or best characterize what that land is and can be. Um, and I think, like, for this park, there's so many of them. I think when I think of the ideal Main Street, I think of Paris. When I think of the ideal Frontierland, I think of Paris. When I think of the ideal Adventureland, when I think of the ideal Fantasyland, I think of Paris. And maybe Discoveryland when it opens, certainly not now. It's, it's definitely the weak link in the park. Oh, there I am meeting the Imagineer who designed my shirt. Happened to run into him while we were filming this segment. Um, this is oh, that's cool. Again, yeah. Uh, yeah, this park is, is fantastic. And there's some great, there are the best versions of particular attractions. Um, I think Phantom Manor is the best haunted mansion. I think this is the best Pirates of the Caribbean in the world. It is undoubtedly the best Big Thunder Mountain in the world. Those are all great. Um, their seasonal entertainment is fantastic. I love all their seasonal stuff. Their Christmas parade was good. The Pirate and Princess Festival was phenomenal. And people love the Jungle Book Jive. They really try very hard with entertainment. Um, what's bad is, I think, just Discoveryland. They've thematically decimated Discoveryland. They have a, another shoehorned filler magic, which is junky. They ruined Space Mountain, which is really sad. Um, Buzz Lightyear doesn't belong there. Lack of oh, new attractions. The, the lack of things that have been added in like the last 15 years. It's, it's, it's hard when you haven't added anything in so long. Um, and then maintenance. They, ha they have big maintenance problems. Theirs are the most warranted due to their monetary problems when they weren't, you know, when Disney wasn't paying the bill. Now they don't really have an excuse now that Disney owns them. But, you know, Disney will you keep falling on that, you know, they didn't make money. Um, you know, at least they were entitled to have those maintenance problems based on the, the actual lack of funds that were there. Um, but this is a beautiful park. It has the, the, a lot of the walkthrough stuff is great too. The castle walkthrough and the Nautilus. And yeah. It is a beautiful park to walk around if nothing else. And it then at least has a couple of rides that you really will fall in love with and a great fantasy land. I always forget about fantasy land because so much of it is, is things you can see or are things you can see in other parks, but they're great versions of all those rides, Peter Pan and Snow White and Pinocchio and, and the Alice Maze is very cute. I like their storybook land. I like their Casey Jr. It's, it's a great park. It's beautiful. I would love to put it higher. I just think they have some, some issues they need to resolve. I'm looking at this Main Street, and I realize how much I miss having a long Main Street. Yeah, the design of this park, like, right in the, the omnibus in this park is a surreal experience. Like, being up on that second level and seeing these beautiful Main Street facades, and then with this, this castle, this really picturesque castle, like, situated on a mountainside, way off in the distance. I mean, it's not that far away, but the way they, they set up the scale and the spacing... Uh, is is brilliant. Every interior, every Main Street interior is more stunning than the last. This cable car bake shop, I love. The candy shop that's like Coney Island themed is beautiful. The we didn't even talk about the arcades, the walkthrough spaces, 
behind both sides of Main Street, which are gorgeous and then also serve uh, just as a wonderful way to avoid, you know, overcrowding and allow you to get around parades and stuff. A, such a well-designed park. It's such a shame that the story for them went the way it did. I, this is the park that I have always wanted to visit the most. I, I've wanted to go to Paris since I was about four years old, long before I knew anything about Tokyo. I knew about Paris. Um, it, it just, there's so much, every time I look into it, there's always something that stuns me. Like I'm watching this video right now and just Main Street makes me want to go. I want to fly to Paris the second I can. <sighs> the pretty this part. is, wow. <laughs> the only thing that holds them back is food though. The food's bad. Not as bad as people say, I think. I, I've been to enough places that I really actually like, but their places that are bad are like a new level of inedible. Um, their shopping isn't very like pizza Rizzo inedible. <laughs> oh, I think worse. I think um, uh, Colonel Hathi's pizza outpost was legitimately the worst pizza I've ever had in my life. Ew. Yeah, really? it's bad. I, I was it's worth in, it. It was I worth it to see the interior, but yeah, that's bad. It's also too bad that they don't have a night parade anymore. I know they banished yeah. Fantalusion here, and then they got rid of that. Yeah. This one was a bit, like, I when I was thinking about ranking, I was thinking more so just about Dis Discoveryland specifically, because reading, like, stories about how they made it in all the concept art and the poster designs, like, we did that poster tournament, and, and the yeah. Paris ones were definitely up there for the majority of that tournament. Well, because this was They're the so same. They're so great. Oh, yeah. the, the, this and Disney Sea have the same story with a different ending. They were both times when Imagineering yeah. was allowed to do whatever they could possibly imagine. And unfortunately, because of the market they chose and some other decisions they made, this park didn't succeed. One quick thing. Is this a castle show, or do the fountains just do this? This was for the pirate and princess thing. There was a moment during the day where music would play and fountains would just go off. Like a... Uh, okay. Okay. But it was just for the season. No, it's cool. Like, it adds something. It's I mean... Great castle. So pretty. This park also has great music. Like, when I was looking up... Like, back in the day when you could not find Disney park music so easily on YouTube. Like, you had to go finding it. And there were websites devoted to, like, these... This park's background music yeah. and ride soundtracks. That's how I found the Space Mountain ones, which are... which. The original ones were amazing, yeah. and I kind of like the Mission Two one as well. Uh, um, the one, oh no, the this park has fantastic I, music. The other reason I think I love this park is I think, um, I know I said it's a dead. Hello, Tom. Tom. Someone might Tyler, are you still there? Yeah, I'm still here. It looks like we have lost Tom. <laughs> I'm, well, I'm just going to keep talking about Discovery Land Hello? Un until he comes back. There he is. Oh, Tom's <laughs> so never back. Mind. What I don't know what happened. Nothing happened. We lost you. <laughs> oh, okay. Maybe it was your connection. I don't know. Um, the no, other, I, we I know still I heard Tyler. All right. The other reason... Um, I like this part. I know I said again that I, I, it's bad that they haven't updated or, or added anything in a very long time. But um, growing up with Disney World in the 90s, I think you, you get an idea of what a Disney park is. And I think this park still, oh, there's a kid trying to step on a duck. Um, and then me consoling oh. the duck, telling him to run for safety. Gosh. <laughs> I, I like that this park keeps, like, what a Magic Kingdom park is alive. Um, you know, like, its anchors are mansion and pirates and big thunder and space. And, you know, the things that are quintessentially Disney are, are here, and they're the anchors around which the park are built, is built. Um, 
It's a shame they ruined Discovery Land. But this this park, when it opened in 92, I, at that moment in time, was absolutely the best Disney park in the world. There is no doubt that this was the park, at least for a bit. Um, and then time was not particularly kind to it. But, um, yeah, I mean, look at look at the, every view in this park. Again, it's the Disney Sea of the Castle Parks. It is the best best designed of the castle parks far and away shanghai did not come close to this i'm sorry i know so many people oh shanghai is beautiful shanghai is the best no no it's not look look at this park the detail look at this I'm just going to go off in this corner and stare at this stone mural oh, oh the nautilus so so, de great details everywhere so beautiful. All the There's even a star, a tar, there is a star tour star speeder. Yeah, I mean, it did open with, uh, or I don't know, no. Oh, it did? Was star, yeah, Star Tour was opening day, yeah. Oh, and I didn't know that. Yeah, so I mean, they had to include it in some way. I understand, like, the, the one caveat they made for Discovery Land was we needed Star Tours. It was 1992, the thing's only a couple of years old. It's one of the hottest attractions you have. I completely understand building Star Tours. I'm not going to fault them for that. It was also, they also knew enough to tuck it in the back corner so it kind of even wasn't in Discovery Land. Yeah. It's, it's kind of hidden. Um, I think they did it effectively. There's the Hyperion. It's a beautiful park. Anything else to say about. Uh, Paris? No, we're good? No. Okay. Number five, the Magic Kingdom. Uh, <laughs> obviously, the Magic Kingdom is home. I love the Magic Kingdom. Um, and it has, as opposed to Paris, it, in more recent years, it's had some good updates. But we did go through, I think, a, a rather long period with that park of them not really updating anything. I think uh, from the late 90s through the 2000s, the, the park's growth was pretty slow, if non-existent. And the few things they did do were pretty bad. I think Magic Kingdom was in a real bad place, I think, before like 2011, 2012. Um, you have Stitch's Great Escape is one of the newest things you have. And like Toontown's fallen apart. And you still have like this big empty, uh, you know, you, you turn the, the 20,000 Leagues Lagoon into this rubbery playground um yeah ariel's greeting ground like the park was magic kingdom was kind of a mess for a while and then i felt like there was a couple year period where they really focused on bringing this park back to life and i think they did a very good job with it um i think we have some great i think it's one of the i think it's the second best main street for sure i think we have the best fireworks show in the world with happily ever after i mean obviously you have some great unique things you have the country bears the original Country Bears in, in English, yeah, it's cut down, but it exists. You have the Hall of Presidents, a Walt Disney idea, it exists. It's neat that it exists. You have uh, probably the best standard of Haunted Mansion. Um, there, it's the second best Splash Mountain, but it's still really great. Um, New Fantasyland, I think, was great. I like Mine Train. I think Mine Train is fantastic. I don't know why people were so mean about it when it opened. I don't know what people were disappointed about. It has a great dark ride scene. Actually, it's too. Why are people be disappointed scenes. about? It's a cute ride. It's fun. I think it swings back and forth. I, I don't know what's not to like. The only about. thing that's it's disappointing about mind. I mean, the only bad thing about Mind Train is the screen faces. But other than that, it's a lot of fun. No, it's they got work a cute in this. couple They're of dark rides. They don't look great in the video, but they work. It's the only one where they work. I, uh, I, I don't, don't even think they're that bad. Maybe I. I I, I've been. It's been a few years since I've ridden Mine Train. Uh, no, because it's a because it's a controlled environment and they built it well. The screen faces are not off-putting on Mine Train. Most things uh, since I then like... they are, but not on Mine Train. And look at these views. I mean, we considering that this was really designed for Shanghai, the fact that we ended up with these beautiful views off of it, and they ended up looking at like a fence and the city. Is, is, Rather the odd. blessing of size. Yeah. <laughs> their their new fantasy land, where like the fact that you can walk th completely around Mine Train is is amazing. Yeah, it's so rare for them to design a ride like that yeah. without there being like a big show building hidden behind or like Tower Tower in Studios is at least like 
you can you can walk all the way around it. I mean, you don't, but it's entirely themed from every angle, the exterior of the building. Not even to the level and of mine train, though. Like on no, the back, but, they get a uh, little lazy. Yeah, mine train is fantastic. Yeah. No, I like New Fantasy. I mean, the circus is cute, and you solved all the problems with Dumbo. I mean, New Fantasyland goes a long way to fixing the problems of this park. Um, I mean, I still think this Tomorrowland is the worst. It, like, it, from the, every, from the choice, like, the uh, aesthetic I don't know, to the... A lot of the Tomorrowlands aren't it, great. The Tokyo one's not great either. They're all, the Disneyland. thing they're about all, the magic... They're all in disarray at this point. No the thing about them. the Magic Kingdom's Tomorrowland is it started as a great idea because it all tied together. Uh, and it's just kind of yeah. fallen apart over the years. It still has more redeeming about it, I think, than the other Tomorrowlands in that there's a people mover still and yeah. Space Mountain's great. And Carousel. You have Carousel of Progress. Yeah. The only place in the world you can see that. Um, so Magic Kingdom still has, un it doesn't quite have the, the amount of, you know, vintage historic stuff that Disneyland does. But, I mean, considering, like, it's the only place in the U.S. you could still see the Country Bears, it's the only Hall of Presidents, and the only Carousel of Progress, um, I think says a lot. And, again, you have a really great mansion. You have Splash. The only people mover. Um, there's some things I'm not bringing up, which are still good. Like, it's not the best Big Thunder, but it's Big Thunder. It's enjoyable. You know, it's a good place to hit up a bunch of classic attractions, There's especially if you do, do. have it's a, fast it's a, passes. It's a healthy lineup of attractions. You have plenty of good enough places to eat. Like maybe the counter service and the snack game isn't as strong as a lot no. of other parks, but the table service is is for a castle park is particularly good. Um, at least Skipper Canteen and uh, you know beer, eh, not so much beer guest as much as it was, but still. Comparatively to other Castle Park, still pretty good. Um, you know, you still have Tom Sawyer Island. It's a good lineup of stuff. There's good seasonal entertainment. Um, great castle. I mean, it's Plenty of character what season greeting places. What do you mean, what seasonal entertainment? We have parties. It's got Halloween. And Christmas. It's got the parade we and they have Fourth of July some fireworks. overlays at least. It's got the one okay, restaurant we that's love to make fun of. Passively, passively seasonal. Okay. <laughs> uh, I mean, Festival of Fantasy is no, a good I three o'clock parade. That's not bad either. It's real, real good. I think this parade park needs a nighttime parade again. Yeah. Everyone will say that, but I think this park yeah. needs a nighttime parade. I think that hurts it. I think some of the old Fantasyland hurts it. I think. Peter Pan's looking a little raggedy. I think Small World looks pretty beat up. Um, you know, we, we let things rot here. We don't do a lot of maintenance either, despite being the cash cow of the entire division. Um, we have the worst pirates in the world. We built magic carpets of Aladdin in the middle of a walkway. Oh, you know, gross. It, the yeah. park has, it, it has its problems for sure. Um, I think what also hurts it, it's not really fair to it, but... As a standalone park, because there were three other parks to rely upon, you didn't grow as much as, you know, Tokyo or Disneyland did out of necessity because of land constraints. But that's it's not really the park's fault, but I also can't rank it higher, you know. It, it's going to be hard to beat those other parks because of that. Yeah. Um, with the magic, I mean, this is what I grew up with, too. I, I grew up going to Disney World. Um, and with the Magic Kingdom, uh, it, it's, for me, always going to have that special place. You know, like with you, it's home. Uh, yeah. There's there's definitely its problems. I remember, obviously, like we said, the snacks and the counter service were always, eh. Sure, um, suck, popcorn, I, 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 yeah. What saves the Magic Kingdom is... A lot of people, they only go here or they only go to Disneyland or they only go to those two. And that's what they know. And that's why a lot of people, well, that's why they probably could get away with things like lower maintenance because most people aren't going to know any better. I mean, that's just the reality of it. No, I understand that. That doesn't make it all right. 
No, I'm not you know, saying it's all right. I, I'm just saying know, why they do it. <laughs> they, didn't, they didn't think about just, you know, ever, no one was a regular guest when Disneyland opened. That still doesn't mean the, the, you know, the maintenance was still fantastic because they wanted everyone's show to be consistent and, and what it's meant to be. Just because you can get away guess, with it yeah. doesn't mean you should, you know? Yeah. This park's still pretty mad. There's a lot of things... There's a lot of things I love about this park. Like I yeah. said with Paris, I miss having a real Main Street. Tomorrowland is still pretty, although from what I'm seeing in pictures of this weird hybrid where they're kind of yeah. doing the 80s Tomorrowland, it's but also now. still having a bunch of it. No, yeah. it's like it's budget-conscious Tomorrowland redo. Just sl slap paint on it. Just do white <laughs> a white base and then colorful splotches it'll be beautiful it looks terrible i hate what they've done with tomorrowland it is uglier than it's ever I, been in any iteration i don't know if you liked either version you can't be happy with whatever this third version is yeah i mean with the magic kingdom i think one of the important things uh is obviously you got to highlight every entertainment offering when it comes to night entertainment uh, has been really solid. I mean, say what you will about the Main Street Electrical Parade. People love it. it it's popular. It's still held its own. Yeah. Spectro Magic is incredible. Yeah. It still would hold up today. Yeah. Happily Ever After and Wishes, people love it. I, The Magic Kingdom has had the most strong and consistent nighttime entertainment lineup of Almost any castle park, I think. Yeah, I agree with that. All right, number four. I can't believe I'm doing this, but I have to. Disney's Animal Kingdom. <laughs> I can't believe I what? have this this low. <laughs> Thematically consistent with its vision. I mean, Joe Rody has fought for this thing. And, uh, I mean, obviously, I think Pandora <laughs> right up there with Cars Land as, as the best land they've ever built. Um, this, this land is spectacular. I know people like to complain about River Journey. I like River Journey. Could it be better? Sure. Flight of Passage is stunning. The land is beautiful. It's just full of so much detail. You really believe you're in this place. Like, they built all this alien plant life and this, the animal noises. And, um, the entertainment with the mech suit guy and the food is great. Satuli's great. And then the lumpia at Pangu Pangu. Um, everything about this land is perfect, and it made this park a full-day park and made this park feel special. And now this, I think this is legitimately, when people ask me, why should I go to Disney World? I tell them Pandora. I've, everyone I've ever taken on Flight of Passage, they just come off and they're like, that's unbelievable. I, that's unreal. That's amazing. Um, but it's just a great land. It, it, it makes you happy. It's very pretty. Every inch of it's gorgeous. Um, and you could say a lot of for the rest of the park. The park's really well themed, other than Dino Rama. Um, not that yeah. the Dino Rama <laughs> theme is wrong; it is what it is. But they definitely, you know, in some places I get it. Like the the store, the Hester and Chester store, is beautifully themed. I know you may not like roadside stand, yeah, but it feels real. But then you get to like the plasticky look of Triceratops Spin and Primeval War, and I'm like, no, no, this is manufactured to look cheap but actually cheap not like yeah. oh, we thematically <laughs> tried to make this this is actually an expensive thing but we tried to make it look kind of gaudy um it's not that but like kilimanjaro safaris is is excellent at what it does the animal trails and exhibits are top notch uh festival of the lion king is one of the greatest shows they've ever done in a park I love Finding Nemo the musical. Um, Everest is fun enough, even though everything on it's broken. Uh, uh, it, there are some bad things, like Up a Great Bird Adventure, Rivers of Light. There are, some, there are some problems. But all in all, it's a really enjoyable park. It's so different from every other Disney park in the world, which is great. Um, it really feels special. Um, I, I had to put it at four. I, it may not have the lineup of the Magic Kingdom, but it just, in comparison to the other 11, it just feels like its own thing in every way, shape, and form. And now it's got the only version of its stuff to be a bug now, too, um, which I think is a good 3D show, and I don't care what you say. 
Who would disagree with you on that? That's a, People that is don't good like show. it stuff to be a bug. People are weird about it. <laughs> really? People think it's, it's I went, it I went through a phase where I didn't like it I don't, because I, don't I remember it. being like a torture chamber. But I, now I'm like, I have a strong appreciation for it. No, I've always loved It's Tough to Be a Bug. It's a good show. I was genuinely terrified of it when I was younger. <laughs> I, I mean, like, so here's the... <laughs> so what's it working for Animal Kingdom? Is top three, no. The top three are, are hard to crack. You, they would need <laughs> to do a lot of things at Animal Kingdom before they get to the top three. I think you need another land at the level of Pandora... I think you need a good nighttime show. Other than the Tree of Life Awakenings, that's that's good. I like that. Um, you need a new nighttime show. You need to replace the Great Bird Adventure. You need to replace Dino Rama. They they've got a ways to go, but they're on the right track with this park. I just hope now with everything going on with Epcot and the other parks that they come back around and give something to Animal Kingdom. With Animal Kingdom, um, it's one of those parks that you don't necessarily appreciate as much when you're younger. I, don't I think, think it was Animal good Kingdom. When you were younger. I don't think it was that good may when be I true. Was <laughs> I hated this park the first time we went. I like really hated it. When did you first go? Ninety eight. Oh, so when it opened, okay. Yeah, it was bad. I mean, and I only. I only started to like it a little bit because I liked Tarzan Rocks when we went in 99. But even then, it took a long time for me to really want to spend more time at Animal Kingdom. Oh, I decided I was going to bang on a drum <laughs> what with, is... my, with my half a drink. <laughs> oh, you're holding the camera with the other. I... Does that make sense? I mean, I grew up in an Animal Kingdom where the latest and greatest thing was es uh, Expedition Everest. I mean, the last time I went here, there was no Pandora. It was still under construction. So, I mean, for me, when I think of Animal Kingdom, I still think of that little kind of half-day park. And I think because I haven't been so long, my real appreciation for this park comes from watching the Imagineering story um, and listening to Joe Rody talk about this park. Yeah. Uh, I, I never really admired all of the detail and story and beauty that went into, and thoughtfulness, really, that went into this yeah. park. Um, until I watch the Imagineering story. And I and I really think that once I visit it again, I'll be able to confidently put this in my top five as well. Yeah. I, I still think Rise of the Resistance out of the equation, because Rise is great, but I I think as a total land, I, I think Pandora is better than Galaxy's Edge. I care That's what I hear Pandora a lot. I care about Galaxy's Edge. Like Rise, I'll put Rise over Flight of Passage for sure. I don't disagree with that, but I'm... I'm not, I want to spend more, there's less to do, but I still want to spend more time in Pandora. It just feels so much more inviting and nice. And I don't know. I mean, Pandora I looks works. alive. That's the thing. Yeah. It, it actually looks alive. And Galaxy's Edge is, water and, yeah. Galaxy's Edge is very dry. It's, it's a, not an inviting it, it environment. Doesn't... It's beige and brown and cold and big yeah. and yeah. This is all green, and you've got uh, all the different bioluminescent yeah. kind of lights and all these living... It, it feels like an actual place. Yeah. Just in video, it feels like an actual place. We didn't even mention dinosaur. I like dinosaur. Oh, someone's squeezing their stomach now. <laughs> okay, and dinosaur. I, I love dinosaur. Can't leave out dinosaur. Dinosaurs it's still a great fun. attraction. I like yeah. dinosaur when it works i put animal kingdom second for me because it's the park i want to spend the most amount of time in yeah. like out, eat, like peop, some people do still say it's just a zoo park but yeah. compared to other zoos i've been to especially what's in canada it's still the best zoo park i've ever been to as well you should go like kilo kilimanjaro safaris yeah <laughs> the toronto one is terrible yeah, um it the walkthroughs are fantastic, and I I still even love the Up Show as much as I know everyone else doesn't like it. I still think it's fun. Oh, I used to hate. What's wrong with you? I used, <laughs> I used to hate the Lion King show on the opposite. Oh end. come now on! Now I love it. That's the two thousand eight. Tyler was a very bad Tyler. <laughs> now I have a <laughs> fun appreciation. Tyler wake up like at nine or ten a.m. like a human being. That's the question. 
Yeah. N yes. <laughs> Uh, it it's still it's still the like even more now now like doing the research for what i do with the rpg and stuff yeah. like trying to find out little details and little like characters and places and things you can i can use to make like puzzles and stuff like it, it i have such a strong appreciation for the design and just every detail that's in animal kingdom thank you joe all right. <laughs> oh my god, is that the picture that you put up in Slack the other day? Yes, Tyler was loudly it. banging on something before we came on the air. I assume it was that Joe wrote it. Oh, <laughs> I don't know if anyone heard that. Yeah, I was putting that Yeah, up. you were hanging a picture. No, we, we heard the bong, 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 bong. <laughs> and you're like, what is he hammering? <laughs> All right, we figured it out. Number three, <laughs> Tokyo Disneyland. Really? Uh, yeah. Yeah, number three. I thought you'd put this above Disneyland. Nope. No, I don't think it is. All right. I don't think All so. All right. There are some things that hurt Tokyo Disneyland. I think World Bazaar is one of those things. Obviously, this is a great oh, yeah. park. Pooh's Honey Hunt, greatest Fantasyland ride they've ever done. One of the best rides they've ever done, period. The Monsters, Inc. Ride and Go Seek attraction is fantastic. And then the other thing that's really great about this park is it's, it's, a, it's a good museum. It has a lot of older things you can go sort of relive. Um, so you can go see the Haunted Mansion from Florida before the update in a well-maintained fashion. Um, you can go see the Country Bear Jamboree uncut. You can see all three versions of the show. See the Vacation Hoedown and the, the Jingle Bell Jamboree, or Christmas special as it was called in Florida. Um, yeah, I mean, they have a really fun Big Thunder. Uh, best Splash Mountain. The best Splash Mountain in the world. I love their Rivers of... Was it Rivers of the West, right? Not Rivers of America? No, it's it's still Rivers of America. Is it Rivers of America? You're just thinking of Western land. Yeah, because I, I know it's not Frontierland. Um, I love their river because Splash is, like, on it, but then also the Western River Railroad, like, comes in front of Splash. Really picturesque. I love their railroad because it doesn't have, like, a real long like dead spot in it which i think is the problem with a lot of the other railroads um it's a really it's it's the railroad done as a legitimate ride um and the fact that like there's this cool transition where you go through big thunder and there's like the, the dinosaur skeletons which are a, a, a really uh, uh i don't know what the word i'm looking for the, the thing you associate with big thunder and they use that as the transition into the primeval world diorama i love that I'm um, also weird that the Western River Railroad leaves from Adventureland and then goes to Western Land. It's weird, but it works. It works. So the train uh, dichotomy with the Jungle Cruise and stuff works really well. They have a weird, wild, wacky, but fun Jungle Cruise. Um, yeah, no, it's, it's a nostalgic park because I think a lot of the lands feel like they used to at Disneyland or the Magic Kingdom um, with the old colored pavement and stuff. Thematically, it's not the strongest park. Like, none of the lands, you know, again, it feels like old Disney. It, 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 none of it, you're not going to get that level of immersion like Disneyland Paris, but it makes up for it, I think, with the quality of the attractions that are in the park. Um, and, I mean, entertainment, obviously, the best daytime parades in the world are here. Um, they do some fun nighttime stuff occasionally. Uh they, it has some problems. I think Space Mountain's horrendous. The Stitch Tiki Room is bad. Um, it's not without yeah. <laughs> any faults, but they're few. They're few and far between. Obviously, the nicest cast members, the best snack food, uh, one of the best counter the best services guests. in the world. In Hungry Bear, you also have Pan Galactic Pizza Port, which is really fun. Um, their Tomorrowland's kind of eh, but over, but all in all, it's it's a great park. There is enough great stuff in it, and it's so well maintained, and it's always a happy, fun place. And you can't help but fall in love with them. I think so. My problems with this park, obviously, World Bazaar is ridiculously short, but I love having the giant hub. So I guess there's a plus and a minus to it. Um, my problem with this park is there's like three good places to eat 
all of almost all of our counter service is crap at yeah, both but parks. You, snack. <laughs> you could get pop. Well, yeah, but sometimes you want to actually eat. Good. No. <laughs> If you're hungry, I want to actually eat, eat sometimes. I, I could eat hungry bear curry every day. Every day. Probably. Okay, so here, okay. I'm going to pour some water on this. Hungry bear is just like <laughs> every other franchise curry <laughs> restaurant in Japan. Except you. it is in Disney. How dare <laughs> It literally you. tastes like cocoa curry. No. Which is like five minutes from my house. But it doesn't matter. It's... No, I'm hang on. I'm judging it based good. on the other it's stuff good food. in the park. I think it's delicious. <laughs> Oh no, it's totally delicious. I'm okay. just saying it's not really special. Uh, okay. Um, that that's my main problem. Let's with this examine park, is the what we is... think are the good counter services <laughs> at Disney Park. All right, uh, Satuli Canteen. Oh, it's yep. just Chipotle. I could eat the same thing as Chipotle. <laughs> it doesn't take <laughs> away from it. it doesn't... <laughs> I. I go to Animal Kingdom for Satuli. It's good. Like I know I'm gonna have fantastic. I've food never there. been to Satuli. I don't. I don't. But know But I'm how just to making this. a comparison. You're like trying to hurt the the hungry bear just because you feel like I go in the city and I'll get it. But it's still. But it's in the same quality. You're not gonna get it better okay. anywhere. My point is. Other than Hungry Bear and maybe Pangalactic, which Tony Solaroni redeems it more than he does the, redeem eh, it. The, pizza. the calzone's fine. It's edible. I, most of the places I can think of one thing at almost every restaurant that I'll eat, maybe. They're so, and otherwise it's crap. So damn good, like, though. We can't do burgers. Our no. burgers are so bad. Um, Grandma Sarah's just gets worse every time they change the menu. Tokyo does have my which favorite, is a shame. my favorite French fries, though. Yeah, he was here last time. He was like, "Oh, Tokyo has the best French fries the in the world." French fries I, at I thought Disney it was crazy. Park. I stand behind that. Also, the best chicken nuggets, <laughs> the Mickey-shaped chicken nuggets. Oh my god! I have to get the the big the other the other that? big problem with this park. And and this applies to C as well, is that there's so damn many people who all know how to game the system that you it it becomes impossible to do these parks unless you wake up first thing in the morning. I don't agree the, with that. These, these parks are so overcrowded. There there's are like, so many there NPs, are always one or two things that so are hard people. to do if you don't wake up early. Um but I don't think that's true. Like, Honey Hunt is the thing everybody runs for Fast Pass. Well, used to run for Fast Pass, now just books in the app. But I think very often, even on the most busy days, I've been there like 30 minutes before park close, and Honey Hunt's like a 20 minute wait. You have, you have a good streak with that, though. Um, I think it's but pretty like with the consistent. crowd people. It, it 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 varies. I've no been there on days when a honey hunt will close are, within an hour. The evenings are usually pretty dead. The thing about the 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 crowd thing is what drives me crazy. Is there's so many people all the time. I there's That's no what off season. You build for this a good park, park that people want to go to though. There's no off season Disneyland's for this park, crowded which there needs every day to be. too, because it's a good park that people always want to go to. And and the other glaring flaw with this park, and also applies to C, is the show lottery, which needs to die. It is the worst way they could possibly distribute seats for stage yeah, shows that everyone that everyone wants to see. Stage shows are hmm, they're so popular. I get it, but the lottery is the worst possible way they could do this. You want to know what's and the that, worst that's one of my biggest ride? problems. We're about park. to take the worst <laughs> omnibus ride oh. in the world. I thought you were gonna say the worst way to give people tickets to a thing is no, like this, boarding this bus passes. only goes around this circle. It doesn't go anywhere else. It, yeah, it only goes around the hub. <laughs> it goes around the hub. That's it. It is a quick ride around Patrick the hub. Presents. You don't go anywhere. You go back to where you got on the bus. It it doesn't make sense. What? What is that? Oh, omnibus. Anyway, just. I have problems with this park, and I love it to death. I love our seasonal events. There's, I have not seen a bad seasonal event at Land yet, other than Christmas. That's the only bad one they have. Everything else, 
with the seasonal events works we have the best nighttime parade um celebrate was a you great show the that only they killed way too early <laughs> Beneath the night is a nighttime parade. Oh, I guess in Hong Kong, yeah, sure. <laughs> Almost the only though. It's not really like there's a whole lot in the in the competition right now. <laughs> I mean, I love a lot about this park, but there's also so many things I can complain about with this park, sure, and people don't like to hear it. I don't agree with the things you I don't mean, like about this park. And the th weird thing is, you generally don't agree with the things I don't like about this park. I agree I with you on the food, but the same, Disney Sea is the same. The, the, the non-snack food is not good. All of my complaints apply to both parks, like the show lottery yeah, is bad. You're complaining more about parks. the country than you are about the parks, though. <laughs> it's crowded. There's a lot of people. The food's weird. Yes, it's Japan. <laughs> no, but the thing is, Japan also, has good Western true. food. Let's go they... to Sweetheart. Sweetheart says good stuff. I'm going to eat bread. Also, I'm going to have a meal the... of just I did not bread. Say... Out of all the other anyway, melon bread the West... type parks, though. Sorry, he... Castle Park. Great American all the Castle Waffle Park. Company. <laughs> Company. <laughs> I said every restaurant has something. I said almost every restaurant has something good. But here's the thing. You, how dare you Japan insult the Great lot. American Waffle Company like this? <laughs> are all these people waiting Japan, for a parade, or are they just sitting there? Always. Yeah, yes. they're waiting for the parade. They're always waiting I've for a parade. I never see people not sitting on the curb. <laughs> they just are always there. We, they might live there. We don't know. <laughs> Here's, okay, just a total There's side a tangent. Horrible, when we were doing the marathon. In Tokyo Disneyland. <laughs> And the thing is, there's actually some people who would fit that profile. Anyway, yeah. when we were doing the marathon Hello. show, I had to sit there. I was sitting on uh, the hub for six hours for Dreaming Up and for Christmas Stories. Because Why? you could not get up. Because I said I would do it. <laughs> it oh, was right. a terrible mistake. But we also raised money for charity, so that was good. My um, daughter's friend from Tokyo said she waited in six-hour lines in Tokyo. I mean, I don't know if it, that happens when you go on the wrong day. Open, <laughs> or they went on Golden com Week or something like comparing that. Yeah, this that's, that's what happened when you go on a holiday. I've been there on busy. That. I've been there on those days too. They're not great, but again, those people generally leave. Like I remember, even on those super busy days, like I, I still did enough stuff in the evenings. It wasn't too bad. And, and let me circle back to food, because I didn't get to finish making my point with that. The thing is, Japan has a lot of Western food, and a lot of it is good. It's just this park, or this resort, that doesn't know how to make it. I, I hear rave reviews about USJ's food, but yeah, Tokyo just, like, all of our, all of our counter service, just, it's either very, it's very hit or miss. The snacks and are so good. You never know. The popcorn no, the snacks soda. Are great. Remember the popcorn soda? Oh, the popcorn soda was so popcorn good. Soda. You know, Caesar's I talked to someone. Mango drink. Someone I talked to um, was, uh, they were like, oh, yeah, we had the popcorn soda, uh, and it was the worst thing I've ever had. I'm like, how, what is wrong with how you? Dare they? The purple sweet potato tipo torta, which might be the greatest thing just, I've ever had next to the gyoza dog. Just there, I I have nitpicks popcorn. about this park, and that's the thing is that they are nitpicks. I miss popcorn. Um, like there's no night show right now, but no, that'll probably change soon. I can't make strawberry milk popcorn, like, Colleen. Don't be ridiculous. <laughs> now I go home. There, cut, there's to, an... cut to me pouring Nesquik on popcorn and being like, <laughs> "Why isn't this working?" <laughs> <laughs> This park has problems, but a lot of them are nitpicks, and I feel like that's why it's able to be held in it's such high true. regard, is that the problems are really just nitpicks. It's the actual happiest place on Earth. No, one, no one's upset. Except I mean, you Spencer have another castle lottery. park above it, so... The only person not happy that's is because Spencer outside of the lottery. I have... The worst luck with show lotteries. I never win, and I didn't get to find out if my new pass works yet because they closed right after I renewed my pass. Wow. 
I'm very this upset a, about this that. This is a wonderful tour of, of this green space we're on. All right. All right. But yeah, that's that's my problems with Tokyo. We're going to move on. Number two, Disneyland. Why do Disneyland. I not think Tokyo can beat Disneyland? I think Disneyland is special. Disneyland's always going to be special. Disneyland is, is this perfect mix of this charming museum and, you know, these new great things. Specifically now, I mean, Rise of the Resistance is in this park. This park already had a lineup for the ages. And the fact that Rise of the Resistance is in here now is crazy. Oh, no, this park has a killer lineup, yeah. It actually works most of the time. Um, did you, this Alice in Wonderland, I mean, so many great Fantasyland yeah. dark rides, specifically this Alice in Wonderland. Um, Roger Rabbit's cartoon spin. Um, it, Toontown's really charming. You have the Matterhorn. You have Submarine Voyage. Uh, you have a great Space Mountain. Um, it's Walt's Park. It is Walt's Park. It's Walt's Pirates. You have the original Haunted Mansion. Um, New Orleans Square is such a fun land to just, you know, walk. There's charm in every core. Every land, other than Galaxy's Edge, at least, is super charming. The scale of the park is great. But then there's just, every inch is history. Every inch is Walt walked here, or this is the first time they did this. Or this. And we lost Tom again. You may not know he got cut off. But... Yeah, everything he's saying, it's when you read about all the rides that were like pioneered and stuff here, like the fact like the fact that they wanted to do a ride inside a Swiss mountain. And that was just something Walt was like, hey, let's do this. And they're like, Walt, how? What are you talking about? I want you to make a roller coaster out of steel tubes. Yeah. Like it, there's so many firsts in this park. Can you hear me now? Yes. Yeah, you're back weird um yeah i just this part and then this is the best i mean the california parks are the best food parks i think in total um while the snacks the snacks oh, yeah. are second to tokyo they still have a lot of great stuff but then they just have such every counter service restaurant is better than the last there's a lot of really good food i like getting the french dip at french market um I think about like just like the soup and sandwich combo at, at uh, Jolly Holiday. Um, the Hungry Bear's good. Um, there's a lot of good seasonal what food. What is there? What do they serve at Hungry Bear in California? Uh, sandwiches, funnel cakes. It's good. Though. Okay. Pretty good. Not the best, but it's good for what it is. Um, but I like a lot of their food. I mean, it's, they have some good table service too, honestly, though. I love Carnation. Um, Plaza is another good counter service. The fried chicken, very, very good. Um, this, this park's a total package. It's Disneyland. It's the original. It will always be Walt's Park. It's special. It feels special, but it still has enough new and old. Yeah, there's something for everyone. Like Casey Jr. and Storybook Land are super charming. Uh, great parade. Uh, Magic Happens not my favorite, but I mean, generally great parades. Um, some pretty good fireworks shows. Remember was great. I mean, it's hard. Hard to, I don't even know what the, the current lineup of that stuff changes so often. It's hard to keep track sometimes. Magic Happens isn't the best parade I've ever seen. Um, but generally, Forever I mean, like was Date a the Night show. actually runs here or Electrical Parade. Um, but it doesn't even need those things. It's great. It's a great park. There's a lot of there's a lot to do in it. A lot of it's very good. Has some weak points. The Winnie the Pooh ride. Um, they have the worst Splash Mountain. Uh, Tomorrowland's a wreck, but there's so much good that I, I don't know. I just I find a lot of happiness in going to this park. There's a lot to be said about Disneyland. I mean, like we said, it's it's Walt's Park. It's the original, and when you look at everything they've managed to stuff in this tiny little yeah. park. I mean, they're going to have Runaway Railway soon. There's Galaxy's Edge with Rise of the Resistance. Um, you've got a good, you've got a better space fountain than what we have here, even though it's the same ride. Uh, I mean, one was rebuilt <laughs> and has a sound system, so it's not. Uh, you, you've got all of this stuff that they just crammed into this tiny little park. And 
I I really I love Disneyland, and okay. it's been so long since I've been. Yeah, I there's so much good you could say about it, and I really I can't think of very much bad other than it's kind of small, and you got the tiny castle, but that's part of the charm. I mean. That's what makes it this cute little. It's it still feels like an intimate experience, even yeah. though it's this big, very packed park. Yeah, absolutely. Well, Disneyland's great. Number one, I know number one is gonna shock so many people, uh, but number one is absolutely, and I don't think this is different for anyone's list who's been to all of them. It's Disney Sea. It has to be. There's, there's no, there's no choice. There's no option. Um, every inch of the park is insanely themed. Just, just rock brick, and you don't see show buildings. You don't see things you're not supposed to see. Like, look, look at that. That is a theme park. It's insane. Uh, but beyond that, I mean, it's not just pretty. It also um, has some of the best attractions in the world. In, in Mysterious Island alone. You have Journey to the Center of the Earth, which is possibly the best thrill ride they've ever built. And you have 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea, which is possibly the best dark ride they've ever built. They're both amazing. Sinbad Storybook Voyage is quintessential Disney. It's a, uh, it's a long boat ride packed with animatronics and a, a really beautiful song. Um, you have Indiana Jones, a better version than the Disneyland ride. You have a really thematically cool Tower of Terror. Um, then you've got some just really great weird stuff like the electric railway. Uh, Mermaid Lagoon is super cute, even though it's just a kids area with, you know, off the shelf rides. It's indoors. They built a whole land inside. And so you climate controlled and, you know, uh, sight lines are controlled because you've done this. Look at this. Look at this reveal coming through this arch. I mean, come on. Except for the, the plunge. I know they're working on the pavement. I know. It wasn't and the fun. rock work. But even then, I wasn't even the, looking at the, the bush. I was so distracted everything. by the volcano. <laughs> oh, there's a My, store. I, I know we there's all... a store that's in a glass dome. That's a store. <laughs> it doesn't sound I very much good these. stuff, but it's a store. <laughs> I mean, every I watch land these is walks just in the park so frequently with detail, and they're all so pretty. Um, even the lands I don't like, namely Port Discovery. This, they're, they're so pretty. Your opinion about Port Discovery is wrong. It's not, look at that potato head hat. It's great. <laughs> I love it. Um, look, this, park, this is the one of the, the best, best shots. park that's ever been built anywhere by anyone. Doesn't matter. Look at this. The pavement. There are rivets in the ground. Yeah, in America, someone would fall over them. <laughs> but who cares? <laughs> Look oh, at are the, they like <laughs> protruding? They're rib they're they're yeah, ribbing they stick up. Yeah. You can step on them and it's definitely like an inch higher than the rest of the ground. Um to get to Journey to the Center of the Earth, I gotta go down that cave. Yeah, hey Galaxy's Edge, look at this amazing tunnel. This is just a walkway <laughs> the between Mysterious Island and Port Discovery. Now, first we're going in, all right, just a tunnel. But, but, but that's not it. It's not going to just be a tunnel. Because then they could have just continued the tunnel, sure. That would be fine. But then it's like, oh, what if we did this part in the middle that was like open air? Like, we don't have anything to hide here. So if we did like this open part, that'd be cool. And so it is. It's just open. <laughs> Very different vibe. And then you got some rock tunnel. And then you're in Port Discovery. It's great. And the level, I love, I, what I love about this park is the levels. I think that's what makes it feel so much more, it's, it's so much more like stepping oh, into a movie than any movie themed yeah. land. Just all these levels, things on top of each other, and it's all so pretty. Um, the snack game is very high in this park as well. Of course, the gyoza dog lives here. Oh, no, we hit a commercial. I'm going to give it a sec. <laughs> there you go. At least it's not the squeezing stomach commercial. I don't even, I yeah. hate the attraction in Port Discovery, but God, I love how pretty the land is. I wish there was things in it, but. The attention to details. It, yeah. Insane on every beam of like it. the weathering and the rivets and everything. Like 
if you compare this to Toy Story Land, Toy Story Land's oh, a flaming dumpster yeah, fire of absolutely. when you make things look like big and it has to be all this shiny plastic trash because they had to make 3D look gross on purpose in the original and Toy Story. Like, and this is... I don't know that that's the hangar stage back there because it just looks like I'm in Port Discovery. They themed the back of it to this land. And so at no point am I thinking like, oh, that's just the hangar stage over there. No. This, is, this shows now an appreciation really for, for it, though. <laughs> I don't know. I've Those murals are beautiful. Yeah. In this park, I just remember the first day in this park, just stopping every like 10 feet to stare at something. Just every oh, 10 feet there was a mural too. or some detail. I remember, I never forget, like the, the most vivid thing, I'm about to write Journey to the Center of the Earth finally. And we get in the queue and there's the water fountain. There's a water fountain that's not real. There's a water fountain that molten rock and lava has fallen into. So they built a fake water fountain <laughs> just to keep the story. They're like, oh, yeah, you can't use this one because molten rock has formed in this water fountain. Oh, just so great. I don't even know where this, this I, I could go on for hours. Uh, like, just think about the, like, New York Deli isn't particularly good, but oh, my God, the interior and the story that, like, the deli bought the neighboring businesses and it continues the story even of like the theater nearby, the theater district, and it's it's really fantastic. The only weak point there you're the, looking at the weak point now, it's Sea Rider. Um yeah, Raging Spirits Storm isn't Rider the greatest thing ride. ever, but it's it's thematic, it's in the right place. It's something else to do in the park, I get it. Um The previous ride was Storm Rider, right? Yeah. Yeah, it yeah, was a better I, ride. I, I, we watched it. I would those that ride through was, looks incredible yeah. and i would i would much yeah. rather go on that you still get lost in the shuffle because oh, you're in the same park ride. as journey to the center of the earth Twenty Thousand leagues tower of terror you know sin bed you you get lost in the shuffle easy in this park because everything's so good indiana you forget indiana jones is in this park sometimes and it's the best version of one of the best attractions they've ever built and you forget about it because the park is so good I think the, the every ride with is the biggest the problem with this park. The biggest problem with this park is the lack of attractions. Honestly, it's there's it still not a yeah. lot of actual things to do, and and Fantasy Springs is going to go a long way to address that. Soren helped big uh, time, but that'll be like the completion. Like Fantasy Springs will give them finally enough attractions, I think, to to survive. But like I, I Animal think Kingdom, park, I just want to walk you, around this park yeah, and, and I think look that's at a lot stuff. Of like, I want to feel. I want to get stuff. lost in here. But there's so much other stuff to do. Like, there's so much to look at. Um, you know, there's a lot of shopping, and the shop interiors are as as, be as beautiful as anything we're looking at now. Um, they're all they all support the story. This is just what imagine. This is what they did in Paris, where they everything they built told the story like no interior exterior of anything was not themed or did not support the story and you carried that out in a park that wasn't a castle park um i think it's such an interesting way yeah um i i every i don't have any really other negative things to say about this park other than what i already said about disneyland uh yeah. th this is such a beautiful park every time i come here I get lost a little bit in it <laughs> when I'm at, when I'm where I'll be honest, when I have to work, I kind of like stop and stare at something for a second. I'm like, Oh yeah, I'm supposed to be doing something right now. Uh, it, it never goes away. Even when you live here, it, the wonder and the awe that you have at looking at everything in this park, it, it doesn't go away. Um, it's what you expect obviously, from Disney today. This is what I expected yeah. in the last 20 years is, is this level? I like mean, this is their Disney. Like this is what the world has come to expect from them. And here it is, a yeah. park not even owned by them, but built by their own people. And look at it. Show that was what you my can question. Do when you pay. <laughs> who's the, yeah? Who's the res, who's responsible for why this looks amazing? Because it, it it they spent whatever it was going to cost. But the OLC but the Imagineers is are them. the ones who 
designed everything. Like it they does just tell said, you how hey, much of the time the problem is just management, like management just cutting budgets or not letting imaginers yeah. do what they can do. Um, I think sometimes, I mean, sometimes you... it's the opposite. Sometimes you do have the money and things just don't work out. And I think there are some things in Tokyo that that show that. I think Sea Rider is one of those things where, even though you threw money at it and Pixar was involved, doesn't mean you necessarily made something amazing. You know. I, uh, I mean, you can see it with with the new Fantasyland expansion the same way. Like it's almost done and it's beautiful. And this is from the same time period in Imagineering that gave us Toy Story Land. Yeah. It, it, it's a management first thing when it comes to how much money you spend on these projects. And they've thrown, oh God, I think it was, I can't remember if it was a billion dollars or a billion yen, but it was a billion something towards New Fantasyland at Tokyo. Um, I think, no, the $1 billion is for Fantasy Springs. I think it's a billion yen for uh, New Fantasyland. But they spent a lot of money on it. And and you can tell that Imagineering still has what it takes. They just need to be given the free reign to use yeah, sometimes. it. Sometimes. And they, sometimes they make awesome planets. <laughs> <laughs> Did they throw money at Awesome Planet? I, either way, you can write a good show or you could not. Your bad well, writing yeah. is bad writing, you know. <laughs> yeah, that's true. All this sea writer stuff you can. I don't know. I with Disney C, the other big flaw is that there's a few weak points in entertainment. Um, Harbor shows are very hit or miss. Uh, yeah. Tip Top Easter is an awful show. It's Christmas time is. Uh, um, the Halloween show this uh, that they just introduced is confusing. Yeah. Even for locals, it's a but confusing the show. Merchandise. Oh, the merchandise for that was great. All the, yeah, I mean, uh, that's, that's the thing Tokyo also excels at, is just merchandise. They just always, the stuff is always themed and related to the stuff in the park, which is what so many of us want out of the Disney-owned parks, and it's such a fight to get it, it feels like. Um, but in Tokyo, I mean, they just always, it doesn't always stick around, which is sad, but, uh, I mean, the opening line of merchandise for any attraction or show is always super cool. The boat oh yeah, back. like for the it's 18th area, anniversary of, with the 18th anniversary of Disney Sea, how they did everything themed to sea and fortress explorations, and you had like the Magellan's uh, uh, tableware where you had yeah. the sea engraved on the flatware and the plates and the Magellan's menu themed notebook, like yeah, all that I'm stuff was your, really I'm cool. I'm waiting for the bubble trail, Spencer. There it is. <laughs> Oh my God! I told you it's real. You didn't believe me. <laughs> I've never it seen it. <laughs> I told you it's there. It's as if a submarine <laughs> is leaving the port. There's just this bubble what trail is... that goes under the water. What that, is this? If there is any one thing I can right show now, you to explain why this is the greatest theme park in the world, that's it. A bubble trail that that <laughs> only I saw at that moment. Just went like under the water out into the ocean. There it goes. It's going all the way out. It's going out towards the ocean. And uh, where, yeah. where, like, where are you in this park right now? Like, I'm what like is at the this extended walkway? queue. I'm in some weird back corner of Port Discovery where the the light, this is, is the super oh, yeah, powerful this is, light is coming. This is the exit to Aquatopia. It's the extended queue for Sea Rider and the big, big light that you can see from Disneyland. <laughs> You can see from a is lot here. of places. Um, I think oh, I'm yeah, I can see. You can it. see this light from miles and miles. I don't know, maybe it wasn't um, on yet, so I'm not looking at it. I don't know. I don't remember. The, the entertainment with the, at this park, um, I, I love some of the stuff we do. I love Big Band Beat. Um, some people don't. I love it. Song of Mirage is brilliant. Um, we got a, but then we you got have a $5 shows like, uh, super, or five euro super chat. After living in Tokyo, California, and Paris, I can choose my favorite among them. I can't choose my favorite among them. But right now, I'm craving a Reuben sandwich at the New York Deli. Oh. Yes, so good. You like the Reuben <laughs> sandwich? Oh, yeah. I think oh. it's great. Have I, I have, I have someone else who's... It. Someone I know who grew up in New York approves that Reuben sandwich, too. It so me. I need to try it, apparently. I don't know. I always no, get roped into you. the seasonal one. 
whatever the seasonal send me to review is. the seasonal ones and you can eat the Reuben. Nope. <laughs> uh, with um, with entertainment, then you have shows like Hello New York, which is the worst stage show at this resort, one of the worst ones in the world. It's a terrible show. Um, I don't know, Beauty and the Beast. And like I said, the Harbor shows. No, Hello New York is worse than Beauty and the Beast. You're not going to get to see Hello. No one listening to this is going to get to see Hello New York anyway, so it doesn't matter. You have to show up like six hours in advance or something. That's because the APs are obsessed with it. And literally, there was a day when we had a blackout last fall, and every show of Hello New York was about a third full. You could walk up to it in the middle of the show. It's the APs that love that show so much that they camp out on the bridge to Cape Cod for six hours to see that stupid show. It is the worst show I've ever seen at a Disney park. Wow. Anyway. Where does that um, boat take you and, to? And all around all the ports. It's a Grand Circle tour. Well, it depends oh, which one you amazing. take. Some of them stop and let you off. Yeah, sometimes there's one goes that goes between Mediterranean. And sometimes you can get off in Lost River Delta. And Mediterranean. I'm park. getting a lot. I'm getting lost in these walks in the park right now. <laughs> just, just See, like uh, every people... single shot is oh, a painting. Touch, don't even touch it. It's going to play the next one automatically. Um, I've With, been um... told by people who watch this walk in the park Disney Sea um, that it's the best tour of the park that's out there, which I think is, is very sweet and high praise. Yeah, skip this ad, please. Uh, but, um, so I take great pride in this. I think it, I spent most of a day doing this, and I, I tried to be as thorough as I could, at least in these 15-minute videos. I think um, they're pretty neat. So if you want to take a um, actual just walk around Disney Sea and see how the park is actually laid out, and walk up to things, these these are on our YouTube channel. I think there's, I don't know if part six is the last part. I think it is. But, uh, it's too bad because I I'd love to talk those. about Mediterranean Harbor while we're while we're in Mediterranean I'm Harbor, sure but it's we'll okay. Have a chance to do these again. People have asked us to bring these back. We might try something like this again down the road. We'll see what. I, oh, the top piece I, of the store was still missing when this was shot. With um, the other the the harbor. We talked about Fantasmic earlier. I will defend our Fantasmic, but it still wasn't a very strong show. When you hold any Fantasmic up to the Disneyland one, it isn't really a strong show. Um, one of the challenges we face with Harbor shows that they have gotten worse at is the Harbor is a 360-degree viewing area. And... They have done this weird thing for the past. They put in a stage. They put in two stages around the harbor, and they expect people to sit in these three areas for shows that are usually made for 360-degree viewing. It's this weird hybrid that isn't really working, and I wish they'd stop trying to make it work. Um, the entertainment has slowly gotten worse at this park. I think that Song of Mirage is the first time in a while that they've really done something that worked here. I forgot Song of Mirage. I love that show. Oh, it's great. Yeah. Um, but before that, we had a period of about six or seven years when nothing good came out of this park with entertainment. Big Band Beat is, it's a good show. It has its flaws, but it's good. Um, out of Shadowland, everyone hated it. I don't know why. I thought it was great, but I'll go with the public opinion for this. Um... Every harbor show, going almost every harbor show, going back to about 2012 is awful. I there was a bad period of entertainment for this park, and I think that that still holds it back now because a lot of those same people are in charge. I think that's one of the weakest parts of this park is the entertainment. Honestly, that's fair. You don't even realize the, because this park looks like it looks, which is where like we. This. we where we were walking through before, like you could see tower in the distance, yeah. but sightline wise, like everything, it's so weird to You're think this. You're supposed to see every tower, area. Though. Yeah, because that's where the railway is going. The railway, like, yeah, it's the railway path. So looks towards the waterfront. Yeah, it's it's so weird that every single area still feels like it's part of the cohesive yeah. theme of the park. Like there, there really isn't a visual intrusion 
anywhere anywhere there's not and if you're supposed to see stuff you're meant to be like it's so beautiful oh let's stop for a shrimp bun (laughs) oh god the shrimp bun's not bad I liked the Halloween one with the teriyaki chicken that a lot was more. I great. thought that was I liked better. that one. I agree it was better, but the shrimp one's not bad. Oh, well, mm. we're going to Duffy Town. <laughs> Here we go to Duffy I, I will Town. say, if you look back at what Cape Cod used to be, there is a. Uh, I think that having Cape Cod be the home of Duffy was a brilliant use for an otherwise very underutilized part of this park. It literally only, only existed thing... for Cape Cod cook-off. I mean, Aunt Peg's, Aunt Peg's had its own, like, merchandise, but it wasn't popular. Well, there was um, Donald's Boat Builders at Cape Cod cook-off before yeah. there was Duffy. Um, I think the other, that's another thing actually about this park is I think there's actually too much Duffy. I think that there's too much of him. McDuck should not be Duffy. Maybe the store at the front of the park is okay, gonna, but I really think if they're not going to carry much. the McDuck's merchandise, then I don't care. It's fine. I kind of like to think like Scrooge McDuck is such a brilliant businessman that he saw how popular Duffy was and he's like, I got to start carrying this crap. <laughs> <laughs> but the rest of the store still has all of the duck themed stuff in it. It's That's just the fine. temporary it's still, duffy the things. The store is still between. pretty, even though it sells duffy stuff. It's fine. I theme think parks, there's too theme much. parks tried for a long time to have the merchandise match the store, and sometimes you can do it. Sometimes you have a Galaxy's Edge or a Pandora, and you can do it. But sometimes you just gotta sell the stuff. Like Aunt Peg's is too small. It, I don't know where else you'd sell it. You, you gotta you gotta have a big the store big for Duffy. Duffy store at the front of the park. It's not big enough. It's smaller than it's McDuck's. It's almost the same. It's almost the same size as McDuck's. It's no, a little it's bit smaller, not. but it's almost the same That's size. That's maybe one third bigger than Aunt Peg's. Oh, this is this is one of my favorite jokes in this theme park. If we pan back to the sign, that sign in between Cape Cod Cookoff and the My Friend Duffy Show building says DB Cooperage on it, and I'd always think oh it's my hilarious. gosh, really? <laughs> that's yeah, that's that great. sign right there says DB Cooperage. Oh, I see it's it. brilliant. Is is that a that's, that's one of my favorite stories? Even better, there's milk chocolate popcorn right there. <laughs> I need to. Oh wait. yeah, the milk chocolate popcorn is good. Well, we're heading Spencer, towards the best popcorn. DB Cooper sent it to me. <laughs> I can start to smell the best popcorn at this point, wafting the garlic across, shrimp across the New York Harbor. I I stopped for those to of you about who, the chocolate popcorn. For those of you who haven't been keeping up, uh, we posted our video review of the matcha white chocolate popcorn, From in January, which at the end, Tom yes, Tom goes back and eats garlic shrimp popcorn at the end. Yes, I had to undo the the matcha popcorn, which he, sucked. He made us walk across the park to get the popcorn. You're damn right I did. I wanted garlic shrimp popcorn. <laughs> anyway, we've, we've, we've kind of, we've gone off a little bit. I I yeah. love this park. I remember with this park, you. Um, I had problems with this park when I first visited it. At the beginning of the day, I think I was trying to do everything in one day so much that I was like, why is all of this out of the way and all of this here? And then by the time I hit the afternoon where I could slow down and actually look at the park, I was like, my God, this is the most beautiful thing I've ever seen in my life. It, it, it's a park that you really need to slow down and savor because if you try to rush through it, you're going to be upset. I don't know. Um, it like, isn't like meant the to first be day, through. All I wanted to do was run to like Journey and 20K and those. And that's what was great. I think what I liked was doing the whole – like we did those, but we I did those in... three attractions I really wanted to do. Then we had lunch at Casbah, and then we kind of just walked around while like we waited until we while we waited for the next fast pass to be valid, and that's kind of well, we have to do. But I, you know, I you wanted went to... in with prior knowledge about this park. I went in with nothing. I just knew that I, I mean, needed I to ride. Who had been, I, you know? I went to here knowing, knowing, eh, knowing that I had to ride Tower and journey and that was really all that i had like i went into this park fresh my first visit um and i think that 
the reason why I was so unhappy with it halfway through the day was just because I was trying to rush through and I wasn't actually stopping to look at it. This park isn't meant to be rushed through. This is a park that you have to slow down. You really need to look at everything. Yeah, like the fact that they built a tiny tugboat, which only purpose is to sit in the harbor. And blue steam. <laughs> yep, that's it. That's all it does. But it's amazing. I almost walked into those down. It's a beautiful park. It obviously has its flaws like every theme park does. Um, Nothing's perfect. Capacity issues primarily. But, I mean, again, it's, it's like with with all of the top five parks, really. Once you get into criticizing all of the, these top five parks, most of them are nitpicks. These yeah. are all great If parks. I turn to the right, there's a full-size cruise ship, but it's not real. It's just a building full of restaurants. So, I mean, there's that. It's also home to the greatest themed bar in any Disney park or resort in the world, the Teddy Roosevelt Lounge. I need to go back and have that buttered rum at Magellan's that they, you keep talking about. I know. Well, they got rid of it because we ordered it too much. We, we ordered one item <laughs> it's at too Magellan's. much at Teddy Roosevelt that they removed it from the menu because they were mad about it. They're like, those Americans keep coming and ordering hot buttered rum. We have to remove. It's the only thing removed from the menu. It's, it's like a drink menu with probably 100 or so items. The only thing they removed was the hot buttered rum. So it's mean. still at Magellan's. <laughs> I know, but we'll start going there, and then they'll get mad. and They'll, they'll cut it from the menu next. There's Tower. <laughs> it's beautiful. There's there's so many good things to say about this park. I think we've said them all, yeah. um, or at least a good amount of them. Yeah. I think I think that's it. So that's that's the rankings. I'll recap real quick. Number twelve was Walt Disney Studios Paris. Number eleven, Shanghai Disneyland. Number ten, Epcot. Number nine, Hong Kong Disneyland. Number eight, Disney's Hollywood Studios. Number seven, Disney California Adventure. Six was Disneyland Paris. Five was the Magic Kingdom. Four was Animal Kingdom. Three was Tokyo Disneyland. Two was Disneyland in Anaheim, California. And number one, Tokyo Disney Sea. So that's the <laughs> ranking. Uh, let's see what's coming up on. Uh, well, first, let's remind people about how they can donate. Uh, so number one, there's the super chat. If you enjoyed the show, there's a super chat down there on YouTube in the lower right hand corner. Go ahead and click it. You can donate. We really appreciate it. Um, the other thing you can do is become a member of WIGS, the WDWNT Inner Globe Society. Starting at just two dollars a month, you get access to exclusive post shows and other exclusive programming, um, full res PDF scans of uh, different uh, older park paraphernalia. Um, early registration to events, all sorts of really cool perks and benefits, and you get to be a part of our little community. Early registration for some of the games on News Tonight, extra core bucks, all sorts of fun things. You can join at patreon.com slash WWNT. We now have over 300 members now. We broke the 300-member threshold, a new record. Thank you oh, wow. for your support. And thank you to Alex Bailey, who gave us $2 in the Super Chat. Thank you, Alex. We appreciate it. Yay. Um, all right. Coming up this week on WWNT Live, we still got some time left, folks. We don't end until the 29th. But uh, coming up this week, uh, tonight, Cosmic Read Live. Tomorrow at 11 a.m. I don't know why you do this to yourself, but they're going to watch Dinosaur because it's the 20th anniversary, not of the attraction, the film. If you want to watch <laughs> along with the animated classic, sure, Dinosaur. <laughs> it's probably true, so that should be interesting tomorrow. Who's hosting that? Shannon is. Oh, Shannon, will, she'll have a good time with that. It'll be something. Tomorrow night at 9 p.m., it's Universal Orlando News Today. It's been real popular, so we're going to keep it going. Uh, Wednesday, May 20th at 11 a.m., not only will we be covering the opening of Disney Springs, but if you're bored with that for some reason, you could also tune in to Tyler and Rob's Graphics Time where they're going to tell you all about how they make the graphics. They'll show you weird ones they made that maybe you only saw once. You know, they'll, they'll, they're going to talk all about graphics. Should be a good time. 9 p.m. on Wednesday is Park Center. Uh, Thursday, the 21st, 11 a.m. party with Pete. 9 p.m. WDW News Tonight. This week, 
on news tonight. The Jumble Cruise is back, uh, leveled, but we're doing the Epcot uh, background music loops, and I promise we'll actually play the music this week. Everyone complained last week. So we'll, in case you're not familiar, <laughs> we'll play a little bit of all of them. So you know what we're talking about. All that and more this week on News Tonight. Uh, Friday. What's on Friday at 11? Oh, we just. Oh, Friday at 11. Is that the Friday? It was the last Friday. No, that's the 29th. What's this Friday? Marvel ranking. They're ranking all the Marvel movies with Ron on uh, Friday at 11 a.m. Uh, Friday at 9 p.m., WWNT staff, Disney Park Memories. Staff's going to show you old photos of them at the parks and tell you about the memories associated with them. It's something we sometimes do on the uh, the charity live show in November, but uh, we're going to do it uh, on here as well. as We bring WWNT live to a close. And don't forget, obviously, Wednesday, we have a ton of coverage of the reopening of Disney Springs for you as well. Uh, thank you to Dawn16, who donated $5 in the Super Chat. Thank you, Dawn. Thank you. We appreciate it. Yeah, thank you. Yep. All right, but that's it. Thank you for joining us for my park rankings. Hopefully you agreed. And I didn't anger people because that's all I'm usually good at. <laughs> Anything I do, usually people misconstrue things and blow things out of proportion. But not today. <laughs> good. All right. Well, that's going to do it for us. We'll see you real soon, everybody. Bye. So, it's always good when.